Showdown time in the Southeastern Conference as the Gator Television Network presents one of college football's great rivalries, the Georgia Bulldogs against the University of Florida Fighting Gators. The Gator Television Network presents University of Florida Football. Fighting Gator Football is brought to you by Cruise Beer, the best of the Rockies is yours. Zenith, the quality goes in before the name goes on. The members of Dairy Farmers Incorporated, local producers of real, fresh Florida milk. Atlantic Bank, the best bank around. Your Florida and South Georgia Ford dealers. Have you driven a Ford lately? Likes meat. Old-fashioned goodness is better. Scotty's, serving Florida with over 100 convenient locations. Farm Credit Service, farming spoken here. Gatorade Thirst Quencher. Gatorade is thirsty for that deep down body thirst. Blue Cross Blue Shield of Florida. We hear you and are working on the answers. Eastern Airlines. We earn our wings every day. And by Florida Citrus Commission. Orange, you smart? Georgia, Florida day at the Gator Bowl in Jacksonville. A renewal of this classic rivalry between two great football teams in 1984. Hi everybody, this is Larry Osterman along with Jim Yarbrough. Welcome to today's telecast. Again, it's all here. It has been a great tradition, a great history of outstanding football games between these teams. And it looks as though we're going to have another in the long series today. Oh, you better believe it. It doesn't get any better than Georgia, Florida. The one, one of the interesting things about this ball game is there's really no home field advantage. There's 35,000 Georgia folks and 35,000 Gators, and it's, a, it's an exciting afternoon. I was here as a player, and it doesn't get any better than this. Well, Vince Dooley, of course, has had sensational success as the head coach at the University of Georgia. On the other hand, Galen Hall has enjoyed outstanding success in his very limited career as the interim head coach at the University of Florida. So we've got two guys that have enjoyed a lot of things, but uh, really in their respective capacities, it's been a different ballgame. Well, major college programs hope and pray for a Vince Dooley. If you could get a coach like Vince Dooley to come in and run your program like Dooley has done at Georgia for 20 years, you've got it made in the shade. They don't get better than Vince Dooley. Uh, he's a professional. He gets his players up to win ball games, even when their talent might not be there. Uh, he's been underrated. When Bear Bryant was getting all the publicity in the South, a lot of people overlooked Vince Dooley, and he, he needs to be looked at because of his uh, tremendous record. Now, the influence of Galen Hall, of course, you talk so much about the laid-back atmosphere. This is not an uptight team coming into this game. No, that's one of the things Vince Dooley has done so well, is he gets his teams ready to play whatever it takes. And I think Galen Hall has those qualities. He's He's proven to this point the Gators have reeled off six big victories, and it's going to be a big day for Galen Hall and the Gators this afternoon. Every great program, of course, has to have an outstanding quarterback. And it's unique this year that there are two freshman quarterbacks who get the start in a game of this magnitude. Right. They're both uh, uh, redshirt so uh, freshmen. Uh, Kerwin Bell has had a tremendous uh, year for the Gators to this point. Uh, David Dukes wasn't expected to see much action for the Georgia Bulldogs earlier in the year, but he's come on uh, with an injury to Todd Williams. And so Dukes and Kerwin Bell are going to see a lot of action. Most freshmen usually come to this game and cheer. These guys come and lead their ball clubs. Jim, you played in this game. What goes through the player's mind just before kickoff? Well, generally you got butterflies in your tummy, but this afternoon the guy's got 747s in there taxiing around, and they can't wait to get out there and hit somebody with a different color jersey on. Well, it won't be long. We'll be back with a kickoff of the Florida-Georgia football game on the Gator Television Network.
championship. High national rankings. A lot at stake in this afternoon's football game at the Gator Bowl. And as we mentioned earlier, Georgia has a 4-0 record in the SEC. The Gators and the Tigers are deadlocked at 3-0-1 in the Southeastern Conference. Florida ranked 10th in this week's AP poll. The University of Georgia ranked number 8. We talked about the young fellow David Dukes will get the start at quarterback this afternoon for Georgia, but undoubtedly we'll see some of Todd Williams, who has been sidelined with an injury. Yeah, we understand that Todd Williams, number 15, who is out with a shoulder separation, will see a lot of action this afternoon, so don't be, see, uh, don't be surprised to see two quarterbacks on the field from time to time uh, by the Georgia Bulldogs. As you can see, and here in the background, the toss of the coin is taking place. The University of Florida has won the toss, and has elected to receive. So, first possession. We talk about dominating football games and getting the upper hand at the start of a, a football game. The Gators will have that opportunity here this afternoon. Oh, it's so critical to get out there and take charge immediately and let the other guys know that you're in charge of this ball game. So, the first series, the coaches hope and pray that their first series is always a powerful series, especially on offense, when you get that ball and ram it down the other folks' throat. A week ago, the University of Georgia had a tough time against Memphis State, winning by a score of 13 to three. Just 118 yards in total offense were posted by the Bulldogs. But this is a little bit different type of a football team that the Bulldogs bring in today. It is a team that is composed of a number of running backs, not one outstanding individual, but a number of guys that can do the job. Yeah, you don't see a guy like Herschel Walker come on the scene very often, and thank goodness from the point of view of the Florida Gators, but Vince Dooley, entering this season, thought that he would go into the season with maybe three or four guys at uh, carrying the ball from the tailback and the fullback position to give the opponent a different look. And that's exactly what they've been doing. And they've had some great success. They put a lot of points on the board against Vanderbilt. I think they scored 62 points. So they know how to play offense. They scored 62 against Vandy and came back with 37 against Kentucky before struggling for the victory against Memphis State. Florida has beaten Auburn and Georgia back-to-back -back only four times in 32 efforts, but 1984 is another year. The victory is in the column for the Gators against Auburn, a commanding 24-3 victory a week ago. As you can see, it is a jam-packed red and orange stadium on the shores of the St. Johns River here in Jacksonville. Well, they say that red and orange clash, and never is that more evident than here this afternoon. The Bulldogs will kick off to this man, Lorenzo Hampton, who has had a sensational senior year in five of the last nine games. The Bulldogs picked up victories, cost the Gators an SEC title. That is something that the Gators will hope to avoid here this afternoon. Gary Rowe and uh, Ricky Nateel are back along with Hampton as Kevin Butler, the premier kicker in the nation will kick off for the University of Georgia. This crowd has been alive since about 11.30 this afternoon, hoping it up with the orange and blue chant from side to side, and the Georgia Bulldog from end zone to end zone. We are about ready for the 1984 Classic. Florida and Georgia from the Gator Bowl. Butler's kickoff, a high end over end kick, will carry to the end zone and uh, bounces on out. So it'll be brought out to the 20 yard line, it'll be first down, and Kerwin Bell will get the shot at quarterback. He has hit 74 of 135 for over 1,200 yards. He has thrown just five interceptions. He has completed 11 touchdown passes. So Kerwin Bell gets the start. He'll have Neil Anderson, John L. Williams, Ricky Nateel, Gary Roll, and Walter Odom to work with offensively. And the big guys up front, Kerr, Zimmerman, Bromley, Henson, and Lomas Brown. The first play from scrimmage for the University of Florida. Nateel is split wide to the right, and Gary Roll flanked to the left. They have a slot to the left. That's Odom. He's in motion to the right. Kerwin Bell pitches back to John L. Williams hit behind the line of scrimmage. And he is decked there by John Little, a sophomore from Lynn Haven, Florida, who came up from his roverback spot and made the hit for a loss. This was a big play for the Gators last week, bringing the tight end across in motion, having him kick out on the quarterback. Defensively for Georgia, it's Ruff, Chumley, Harris, Sims, and Hewitt up front. 
And uh, it's Culpepper, an outstanding linebacker, with Boswell, Flack, Harris, Little, and Sanchez, who has been injured, but does get the start here this afternoon. Sanchez has been bothered by a bruised groin and did not see much action on the practice field this past week. We have an official's timeout down on the field. The ball is just short of the 18-yard line, a loss of uh, two plus a, a few inches. So Kerwin Bell takes the opportunity to come to the near sideline to talk with head coach Galen Hall. One thing we're going to look at this afternoon is Georgia likes to line a lot of folks up near that line of scrimmage. On their defensive scheme of things, they'll play about eight guys within two or three yards of the line of scrimmage. So they expect uh, to have a lot of folks up there to stop that powerful Florida running game. But uh, will that help the uh, Florida passing attack? Oh, absolutely. And one of the things Kerwin Bell has done so well this year is his efficiency rating. He doesn't do things that hurts the ball club. He does a lot of things that don't get that much attention, but very seldom does he do anything that will hurt the ball club. Well, we should return to action here in a moment. John L. Williams to carry the ball for the first time this afternoon. You saw his stats. We have played just three seconds, and uh, we should resume play. I'm not sure exactly what the uh, official timeout call was made for, but nevertheless, it uh, was whistled. And it'll be second down and 12 for the University of Florida. The ball just short of the 18-yard line. Evidently, there was a problem with the clock, and they're getting that straightened out. There's nothing worse than to have a great ball game like this and not have the clock work. All right, we're ready to go. A couple of changes for the University of Florida. Frankie Neal is in. He is set as a split left end. On second down, Bell pitches back to Neal Anderson. Cuts to his right. He's got a hole out to the 26-yard line. A gain of eight yards for Neil Anderson, who cut sharply to his right as he hit the secondary. And that was hauled down there by Carlisle Hewitt. That'll bring up a third down and about four yards to go for the first down. Ball well, just short of the 26-yard line. Neil comes out of the ball game. We'll check his replacement in just a moment. Probably Gary Roll. Gators settling back at their own 18-yard line as Vince Dooley looks off from the far sideline. Roll is wide to the left as a split left in. The teal is split to the right, and Odom is in motion to the right from his slot left. John Williams pulls forward, but he is stopped short of a first down around the 29 and a half yard line by Henry Harris. Alvin Ruff also came up to make the stop, and the Bulldogs hold in their first defensive situation. Now you got to give Georgia a lot of credit in this first series. They come right out there, and we heard the head, head knocking all the way up here in the press box. There were some tremendous hits on that last play, forcing Florida to punt. Ray Criswell will do the kicking from his own 15-yard line, and here's the kick. A high wobbly boot. Jimmy Harrell is back at his own 30 and cut down at the 30-yard line. Again, the Gators showing tremendous punt coverage as they have all season long. No score on the exchange of possession. We'll be back with the Gators' offensive unit in just a moment on the Gator Television Network. Well, we apparently have trouble with the clock on one end of the field and not the other. It is stuck at 14.55. Galen Hall with arms folded. The clock on the other end shows 13.37, so apparently that will be our official clock. Quick pass on it in the flat, and he is drilled immediately. Ricky Eastman came up and absolutely drilled the receiver, and he was stopped for a loss. There was Jimmy Hockaday that was nailed back at the 29-yard line. Well, you want your defensive back to get their attention on the hit, and my goodness, did Ricky Eastman get the attention on that play. What a tremendous play by Ricky Eastman in the corner. That's a look at the Georgia offensive alignment in the backfield and up front. And off going to the fullback, Tom Jackson crosses the 30, gets out to the 32-yard line. Arthur White, a freshman from Foster, Florida, made the stop. One thing we need to mention is both of these teams are very tough against the run. There's the Florida defensive alignment with Moten, Williams, Pennington. The nose guard is Tim Newton, Corp, Mitz, and Alonzo Johnson. And the, the secondary, Eastman, Williams, Sybil, and Adrian White. It's third down and seven for the University of Georgia. Duke sends a man in motion to the left. The pitch back to Smith. And he is hit, and he is dropped at the 32-yard line. 
and the Gator defensive unit holds as Arthur White came up and made the stop. And both teams with sensational defensive work in the first two possessions by their opponent. Well, this ball game is exciting, and both defenses are taking control. Arthur White, number 43, comes up to polish off the play. There's a number of battles that are going to happen during this war this afternoon. Georgia won the first battle on defense. Florida comes right back and wins their battle on defense. Chip Andrews stands at his 17-yard line to deliver the punt for the University of Georgia, and he gets it dandy away. It's chased to the far side, takes a good Georgia bounce, and the teal feels it over the shoulder, comes forward to the 23-yard line, and down he goes there. Paul Messer made the stop on the teal, and uh, time is out here at the Gator Bowl. No score. We'll be back in a moment on the Gator Television Network. The man that has had so much success against the University of Florida, as well as everybody else he has played, leading his team against the Gators here this afternoon with a 7-1 and win-loss record, a 4-0 and mark in the SEC in what was to have been a rebuilding year. His counterpart, Galen Hall, who is unbeaten in the interim capacity as head coach of the Gators. I don't think Georgia's ever had a rebuilding year. They just continue to win. First out for the Gators on their own 23-yard line. Gary Roll is in motion to the long side of the field. The pitch goes to Hampton, cuts to his left, he's out to the 30, and he is decked at the 30-yard line. Knox Culpepper, the outstanding inside linebacker from Atlanta, made the tackle. He is number, team, uh, number one in team total tackles this season. The second time this afternoon that you see the tailback, in this case, Lorenzo Hampton, make the cutback. That's only possible if the offensive line is generating some movement up front. Very good point, and that is what the Gators offensive line must do throughout the afternoon against this tough Defensive unit brought here by Vince Dooley. There is a big game by John L. Williams, and he picked up the first down out to the 38-yard line, perhaps the 37. Steve Boswell, a sophomore from Warner Robins, Georgia, made the stop. You don't see it from this angle, but Crawford Kerr, the right tackle, makes a tremendous block, giving John L. some room up front. Look at the leg drive of that big, strong fullback. It's a first down for the Gators, who have the ball on their own 36-yard line. Blackie Neal is flanked to the left, and Raymond McDonald to the right. Odom moves from right to left and sets himself as a tight end as Neal comes in motion to the long side. Bell, the throw for the first time this afternoon, delivers incomplete. A little bit low, intended for Raymond McDonald at the 45-yard line. It'll bring up second down at 10. McDonald was open. Kerwin just wasn't able to get the ball to him. What you, what you, what we've seen right now is the Gators using a little bit more motion, moving the tight end around a little bit, bringing the wide receivers in motion, trying to create a little bit of self-doubt on that Georgia defense. Gary Roll has checked back into the ball game. He wears number 86, replacing Walter Odom. He comes to the right as a slot. Frankie Neal is a split right end, and Raymond McDonald is split to the left. Ball in the middle of the football field as Bell goes back to throw. He's got Hampton. Good move, and he's all the way out to the 47-yard line. And it appears from here he may have the yardage for the first down. Steve Boswell and Knox Culpepper came up and made the stop, but it's first down yardage for the Gators. Okay, you got to give Kerwin Bell a pat on the back. He just takes what they give him. The tailback sneaks out, finds a, a hole in the secondary. Kerwin delivers the ball. You don't ever want to get greedy. You take what the other guys will give you. That's what Hampton has accomplished in the reception department. He picks up big yardage on this completion. Enough for a first down. The Gators have the ball at their own 48-yard line. Neal is wide to the left as a flanker. Bobby Raymond split to the right. Now Neal is in motion to the right. Bell turns, gives to Hampton. He's hung up right at the line of scrimmage as Knox Culpepper came up and nailed him right at the knees and dropped him. He may have picked up a yard of the play out to between the 48 and 9 yard line. I think Knox Culpepper, number 48, has almost made every tackle out there this afternoon. Look at him fill that hole. He, he decides immediately that it's going to be a run, and he steps up to the line of scrimmage and drills the running back. Great play, Knox Culpepper. He was second team All-SEC last year and a solid shot at being on the first team this season. Big second down play as Bell goes back. He's being rushed. He gets rid of it, and it's incomplete. 
Hampton had a catchable ball at the 46-yard line, but could not hold on. Donald Chumley put big pressure on Kerwin Bell, but Kerwin kept his poise and got it to his man, but his man did not hold it. Yeah, you see great pressure coming in from the right side. The defensive end sneaks underneath Crawford Kerr, the offensive tackle. Kerwin's forced to hurry up a little bit. Still a catchable ball. Now it's third down and nine for the Gators. The ball is their own 48-yard line. Gators have converted 54% of their third down plays throughout the 84 season, but they have third and long this time. He's checking off, I believe. He's back to throw, has the time, now still looking. And finally unloads. It is caught by Hampton, 35 first down Gators. Steve Boswell made the hit on Lorenzo Hampton, who made a fine leaping catch at the 35, and it's a first down for Florida. Three things happen. Great protection up front by the big guys. The second thing is the poise of the quarterback. And the third thing is the great hands of the tailback, Lorenzo Hampton, coming up with a big catch. They gained 16, and Florida is in Georgia territory for the first time this afternoon. Gary Roll is flanked to the left. The teal to the right. Odom in motion. John L. Williams goes up the middle, and down he goes at the 32-yard line. Again, it was Knox Culpepper to make the stop for the Bulldogs. Well, Vince Dooley, who throws accolades around with the bandit, said that this is the best Florida team he has seen since the best team he has seen since 1976 Penn State football squad, which is quite a compliment. Well, today it is both Florida and Georgia country. An equal distribution of fans from both schools jamming into the Gator Bowl. Kerwin Bell sends Gary Roll in motion to the left. Pitches back to Neil Anderson. Through to the 26-yard line. The Gators must go to the 25 for the first down. They will be very close. Kenny Sims, a junior from Greenville, South Carolina, made the stop. Neil Smith comes out of the ball game. Big block by uh, the fullback, John L. Williams, on Steve Boswell, number 44. The inside linebacker was trying to fill the hole, and he was met in the pass by the fullback, giving Neil Anderson a little bit of running room. It's third down at about a yard to go for the first down. Odom is in motion to the left. The turn, John L. dives over, and from here it appears he got the first down yardage across the 25-yard line. The Gators had a short one yard to go, but they are calling time and apparently will measure. But from here, it looked as though John L. made the necessary yardage. We'll see when we spot it. It is just short of the 25-yard line. We have a very sharp angle. We'll have to wait. Donald Chumley, number 76, does a great job up front, as all the Bulldogs do, submarining under the Gator offensive line. Stop the play well. Whether it prevented the first down or not remains to be seen. It's a first down for the Gators by half the length of the football, and a Gator drive stays alive. Well, we mentioned uh, Georgia stopping the rush. They yield, on average, 123 yards per game. Very strong defense against the rush. But conversely, it has been the rushing game that has been so strong for the Gators. They're averaging 258 yards a game on the ground. First down at the 25 in Bulldog territory. Second possession for Florida. Bell is checking off now. Hampton moving off to the left, setting as a wing. Bell goes back to throw. Has time. Throws long. Touchdown, Gators! Lorenzo Hampton open to the end zone. Gators go up 6-0. Hampton dropped one early on this drive, made a great catch the second time, and then caught the big touchdown pass. Looked like the Gators checked off on the touchdown play. Kerwin Bell noticed the weakness in the secondary. Checked off, called the play at the line of scrimmage, a big touchdown for Florida. The drive for the point is up and through, and the Gators lead by a score of 7 to nothing on the 25-yard touchdown pass from Bell to Hampton. 
7-0 Gators. We'll be back with a kickoff in a moment on the Gator Television Network. The Gators with a 7-0 lead as Kerwin Bell hit Lorenzo Hampton with a 25-yard touchdown scoring strike, capping an 11-play drive that covered 77 yards. And we'll give you another look at what was a checkoff play and resulted in Pater. Initially, there seems to be some confusion on offense by the Gators. Lorenzo moves over to position himself for the new play, splits the secondary right behind Culpepper, the linebacker, big touchdown. That's the scoring drive. 11 plays, 77 yards. Gators lead 7-0. We cannot tell you how much time remains in the opening quarter. Neither clock is working here at the Gator Bowl. Perkins kicking off. Oh, he moves it deep. Lane is back. Loses the ball. Falls on it. It'll be brought out to the 20-yard line for the first down for the Georgia Bulldogs. Now, Lorenzo Hampton has caught three passes this afternoon already. He entered this game with only six receptions. Tremendous job by the senior tailback. He had uh, just one touchdown to his credit through the air prior to this afternoon's game. Jim mentioned that he was six for 94 with a 15.7 per catch average. Well, this afternoon, he is off to a running start. First down for the Georgia Bulldogs as David Duke operates the team at quarterback position. Turn, gives it all to Tom Jackson, breaks free onto the 33-yard line. Jarvis Williams made the tackle. Andre Smith was the man, number 35 rather than 25. Andre Smith is averaging 6.8 yards per carry, gets a lot of running room up front, gives some credit to that Georgia Bulldog offensive line. It's a first down for the Bulldogs. First first down. Cleveland Gary gets out to about the 37-yard line. Stop there for the Bulldogs after a gain of about three. We'll see, it's about at the 36. We mentioned earlier, we'll see a lot of fresh backs in there for Georgia. Coach Dooley likes, likes to alternate those young, young men in the backfield. Keeps Gary at the tailback spot. Bumpwood Smith is a fullback. Oh, big hit for a loss on Cleveland Gary by Ricky Eastman, who came up and just blasted him for a loss back around the 33 or 4 yard line. Well, they spotted at the 31. A tremendous play by the cornerback. He picks up this option immediately. He's in the backfield and watch that hit. Now, Georgia's going to notice that. They're going to come back in a little bit and pop that pass out there on him. They want to keep that quarterback honest. Lost back to the 31, where it's third and 12. Dukes gives to Cleveland, and he is stacked up at the 35-yard line. Cleveland Gary, a freshman from Indian Town, Florida, hit by Alonzo Johnson and Mark Cork, and the Bulldogs will be forced to give up the football after picking up one first down. A little surprising, uh, Georgia not putting the ball in the air on that big third down play. Jimmy, uh, Chip Andrews will go back to do the putting for the Bulldogs, and Ricky Natiel stands at his 20-yard line. Andrews, one of the fine putters in the game, averages 46 per kick. Neal fighting the sun. Natiel is back at his 11. Uh, 16, he's out to 25. Cut to his left, out to the 40, big return for Ricky Natiel to the 41-yard line. Look for a moment as he may break it all the way, but he got a big return, and Tony Magrum hauled him down at the 41. Ricky Natiel has that rocket speed. Ricky the Rocket Natiel, he's almost on his way right here. Georgia converges just in time to stop him, given the Gators' great field position on about their own 41-yard line. Well, the Gators with a 7 nothing lead. They scored their second time they had the football, and now they have it in their possession for the third time. Boy, everything is fouled up on the scoreboards around here. They show Florida leading 26-22 to 22 on one end, and it's, it was a scoreless tie on the other end. The scoreboard clock is not working, so we will not be able to give you the time remaining of the period until uh, such time they, they get it corrected. I guarantee you there's 72,000 folks sitting here keeping score, too. This is an important battle get to all these alumni and friends of both these universities. 
Well, it has not produced any surprises so far, I don't think. Well, what you can do uh, in terms of looking at Florida's performance, uh, off to a great start on offense, off to a great start on defense, and the specialty team comes up with a big punt return. Florida's got it all together at this point. Georgia's playing well on defense, except for that one drive. They're, they must be a little bit concerned about their offense, though they haven't been able to get anything going on offense other than just a few runs. Well, as you can see, it has uh, been quite an effort throughout the season for the Florida offense. They have a 77-yard drive to their credit already this afternoon, covering 11 plays. And when you can put that many plays together and produce a score, you know that you have done the job up front. We're ready to go now. It's a first down for the Gators at the own 41-yard line. Roll is put to the right, and the teal is flanked to the left. Bell sends Roll in motion. Bell pitches back to Neil Anderson, comes back to his right, gets out to the 45-yard line and turned around, but there's a flag down. And it looked as though Odom may have left his stance on the line of scrimmage a little bit too early. Two flags are down, one in the backfield and one at the line of scrimmage. Probably the Gators had two men in motion at the same time, which is not possible. The tight end had not gotten set before the wide receiver went in motion. Well, it is possible. It's just not legal. <laughs> what it amounts to. It'll cost the Gators five yards. Maybe stepped off from the 41-yard line. Approximately two minutes left in the opening quarter. The Gators lead it by a score of 7-0. Uh, as you can hear, illegal shift, cost them five yards, and it'll be second down and uh, correction, first down and 15. Anderson has had three consecutive games in which he has beaten the century mark. He has a total of 10 100-yard plus days during his career. down at 15 for Florida. Odom set to the right. Neal flanked to the right is in motion to the left. Kerwin Bell pitches back to Neal Anderson trying to get outside and he gets up to about the 39 yard line. Another flag is down. Knox Culpepper made the tackle. And a gain of about four for Anderson but it may be called back. We shall see in a moment. Oh, this Knox Culpepper is playing a super ball game. He's just all over the field making tackles left and right. One thing we need to mention is that going into a, a ball game like this, you don't want to create a game plan that's so confusing that you get a lot of guys making middle errors. And we've seen a couple of instances where guys were a little bit confused on whether to go in motion or not. And I'm sure Galen Hall is going to tell them, hey, guys, settle down a little bit. There's Knox Culpepper making another tackle. The Gators are indicated for holding on the player. And Georgia was guilty of being offside, so they're offsetting the penalty. So the situation remains the same. Ball is at the 36-yard line. And it's first and 15 for Florida. Gators settling back at the 30-yard line. They send a pair of receivers wide to the left, McDonald and Neal. Odom is the tight end on the right side. John L. Williams at fullback, Neal Anderson the tailback. John L. looking for some running room. Nice move, and he spins out to the 42-yard line. He found himself on a little one-on-one -on -one situation right at the line of scrimmage. Gave him a left and went to the right, and uh, gained uh, about three yards on the play to the 41. Not only are the Florida running backs powerful, but they're quite nifty. And John L. picked up an extra two yards with his reverse right there. It'll be second down for the Gators. The ball back at the original line of scrimmage, the 41-yard line. Odom resets as a tight end on the left as Neal goes in motion to the right. Bell, back to throw, has time, downfield, overthrown. It was intended for Raymond McDonald at the 45-yard line. Tony Flack was there with him, but the ball sailed long, and it'll bring up a third down and 10. Well, the Gators had the man-to-man -man coverage they were looking for. Tony Flack, number eight, is going to come up and jump on Ray McDonald. The ball's overthrown considerably, however, so no harm, no foul on the contact. Third down and 10 for the University of Florida as the Gators huddle back at the 33. Line of scrimmage is the 41. Well, 
apparently that is the end of the first period because they're switching in. That is correct. We have no clock here working at the Gator Bowl. So it's seven to nothing. Gators lead the Bulldogs. We played one quarter. We'll be back for the second period of the moment on the Gator Television Network. It'll be third down and 10 yards to go at the Gator Bowl in Jacksonville when play resumes. The Gators leading by a score of seven nothing. They call this the world's largest outdoor cocktail party, and they do some serious partying in Jacksonville at this ball game. They didn't get a chance to party too long, though, with a noon kickoff. Probably just as well. It'll be a little safer trip home tonight. It'll be safer here in the stands, too, I guarantee you. Last year was a late afternoon performance, and uh, the folks really got into their uh, activities in the early part of the day. There are the statistics uh, so far of what we have observed in the first quarter. Gators with a big edge in the total offense. Again, like last week, Florida jumping off to a early lead. Third down and 10 yards to go. Bell back to throw, has time now and loads. It is overthrown, intended for McDonald at the 49 yard line. Kevin Harris was there with Raymond. Pass was too high and the Gators will have to punch the ball away. Good coverage by the secondary of the Bulldogs. Criswell is in to do the putting, and Jimmy Harrell will do the receiving. There is Criswell. He stands at his 26-yard line, and there's Harrell standing on the Bulldog 15. They went down the throw. A little trick play. It's good for a pass reception, and it's a down. First down at the 45-yard line. Lindsey Smith. Oh, Galen Hall reached deep into the bag of tricks on the fake punt, and the Gators pick up a first down. And deep into the guts, too, because that takes some guts to call that play. Roger Sybil, who wanted to be a quarterback on this team, was begging for the snap. Hits Lindsey Smith out in the flat. Oh, a tremendous pressure catch by Lindsey. Young man from Orlando. I saw him play in high school. He's a quite an athlete. Roger Sibble, who was one of the candidates for the quarterbacking position during spring drills, and even early this fall. He jumped 10 feet in the air when that pass was completed. I'm telling you. First down for the Gators at the Bulldog 45-yard line. John L. Williams pulls his way down to about the 43-yard line. Boy, that play has to give the Gators a tremendous boost. There's not one person in this stadium that was expecting that play. That's why it worked so well. What a tremendous call, and what a gutsy call. Bill Mitchell made the stop on the ball carrier, and uh, high overhead, it's a spectacular sight, the Gator Bowl in Jacksonville. You know, Roger Sybil, the fifth-year senior, had that shot at the quarterback position, but it wasn't possible for him to play there. They moved him back to the secondary. He just wants to help wherever he can. It's second down, about seven yards to go for the Gators as Roll goes in motion to the right. Bell pitches back to Hampton, hemmed in, hurdles the man, and gets down to around the 41-yard line. Greg Waters made the stop. You know, there's one aspect of this game that we probably should have spoken up earlier, but really didn't develop. The kicking game for each of these teams. Outstanding putters, outstanding field goal kickers. It could be a big factor in the outcome of this one. Absolutely. Kevin Cutler is one of the greatest field goal kickers ever to play college football. And Chip Andrews is a tremendous punter for the Georgia Bulldogs. And, and the Gators are equally proud of their great kicking game. It's third down and six yards to go for the Gators. The ball just short of the Bulldog 40-yard line. Roll in motion to the left. Bell back to throw. It's deflected high into the air and falls harmlessly to the turf. Calvin Ruff was over and almost had a shot at an interception. It was deflected, I believe, by Don Chumley. And uh, Kenny Sims put a little bit of pressure on Kerwin Bell. Yeah, the guys up front for Georgia doing a great job pressuring Bell. This ball could have been picked off a deflected pass. You never know where it's gonna go. There's no one out in the flat. If a dog had a gotten it, he'd still be running. A high spiraling kick in for a coffin corner, but it is too long. I believe, wait a minute. Oh, the official is walking up the yard line, striped to the four and stops, and that's where it is. A great punt, and there's a flagged up field at the 43 yard line. We'll see what this is. 
Boy, when that official started in drawing the angle on Criswell's putt, it looked as though it had crossed the goal line before it went out of bounds. Illegal procedure. Maybe the call against the Gators. If so, that will nullify a sensational putt by Criswell because you know the Bulldogs are going to ask them to kick it again. Georgia would have really been in a hole there with the ball on their own four-yard line. Maybe Criswell can do it again. As we mentioned, he's one of the best in the country at booming that football. Well, he'll have a little more room to operate with. He kicked that one out on the four-yard line between uh, Criswell and Nardoni. It has been a sensational putting game that the Gators have presented throughout the season. Against the offensive team, five yard penalty, still fourth down. Still fourth down, and Criswell will now be kicking from his 40-yard line. Harwell has a teammate back with him as the deep man at the five-yard line. That is Tony Black, They're parallel to the five-yard line stripe. Good snap, and Criswell will try it again. This time it's out. Oh, 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 Gators recover! What a tremendous hit. It was Patrick Miller downfield to nail him, and Massey jumped on the loose football. Gators have it at the six-yard line. Unbelievable turn of events. James Massey does some head hunting. Watch this collision. Patrick Miller made the hit. He absolutely drilled him, and there's Massey diving on the ball at the nine. Patrick Miller, with that tremendous speed for a linebacker, gets down and makes the hit. I thought it was Massey making the hit. Massey gets the ball. Patrick Miller makes the big hit. What a turn of events. The Gators, in the process of turning the ball over, were forced to punt again after Criswell kicked it out at the four. They now have the ball on the Bulldog eight and a half yard line. And Kerwin Bell has asked for a timeout for the Gators. So time is called here at the Gator Bowl. The score is seven to nothing. Florida leads Georgia. We'll be back in a moment with more on the Gator Television Network. These stages, there's Patrick Miller, the man that delivered the blast and resulted in the turnover. Patrick Miller with a big hit, Massey with a big recovery, and the Gators with a big break. They'll have the ball first and goal on the eight and a half yard line. What a turn of events. Here Georgia is excited that they're not going to be trapped on their own four yard line, so they want to make Florida punt the ball again. Then they come up with a turnover. Now Florida has the ball inside their 10. What a turn of events. And again, it goes back to the special teams that have been developed by the University of Florida that has been so superb throughout the season. Dwight Adams is the coach of those special teams. First and goal for the Gators at the eight and a half yard line. Roll is split to the right. Ricky Natiel is flanked to the left. Odom is in motion to the left. Pitch going back to Neil Anderson. He's inside, down to about the five-yard line. Well, we'll be picking our selection of the Mid-State player of the game in the fourth quarter. And uh, Ray Criswell telling everybody how it's accomplished on the near sideline. Said so that was my fumble the ball punt. It's one of my specialties. It worked to perfection. We spend hours on that kick. And the sun here this afternoon played a big part on that play. That's that's tough for a kid to look into that sun, knowing people are closing in on him to catch that ball. The sun's a tremendous problem for the punt returners. That time has been called by the University of Florida as uh, Kerwin Bell comes to the near sideline. We saw Ricky Natiel fighting that sun before the switch of ends in the opening quarter. He handled it. But uh, it is something to be concerned with. You certainly don't want to cough up the football, but less yet you have to be aware of the on-charging uh, punt coverage team. Right. During this timeout, let's talk about the confusion that's happening on the Gator offense. We mentioned earlier, you don't want to come into a game and be too cute and have guys make mental errors. You'll accept a physical error, a physical mistake. Those things happen, but mental errors cannot happen. And what's happened here, we've had the, the Gators have called a number of timeouts because there's been some mental confusion about assignments, about personnel being in the game. And I know Galen Hall is going to say, hey, we need to get back and simplify things a little bit. There should be no reason for this confusion. Let's settle down, get the job done out there. Well, they've utilized two of the three timeouts here in this first half. 
And we are unable to tell you how much time remains in the first half because the scoreboard clocks are not working here. But I would guess we probably have around nine minutes left in the, the opening half. Gators lead at 7 nothing. When play resumes, it will be second down and goal from the six-yard line. Mateo and Roll come wide to the left with Roll set as the slot. That's the long side of the field. Now Roll is in motion to the right. Hand off this fake. Bell back to throw being rushed, and he gets rid of it. It is overthrown. Flag is thrown. It'll be pass interference, I believe. Odom was there. He was spun around as the ball arrived. Bill Mitchell put some pressure on Bell, but he got rid of it with a sidearm swing. The flag went down in the end zone, and it looks as it'll be pass interference against the Bulldogs. If so, it'll be a first down at the one-yard line for the Gators. Wow, you talk about being in big trouble and coming up smelling like the proverbial rose. The Gators just pulled that one off. Perhaps. We're not sure if the... It was defensive pass interference. Kerwin Bell, how he did that play, I don't know. He's, he looked like Fran Tarkenton on that play. He's, he's going to slip out here to the left, trying to pick out his wide receiver. He's going to get a big rush by number 56, Mitchell. Now, in the NFL, they blow this play dead. But Kerwin has the thought process to throw the ball away. And lo and behold, there's his tight end who has a chance to catch the ball, Walter Odom. I'd like to see that one put down on the diagram board. Uh, that's from that's his Mayo playbook. <laughs> You'll never see that one diagram. That's, that's what made him a legend in Mayo. First and goal, John L. is stopped up at the two-yard line. It'll be second and goal. Those Bulldogs are tough down deep. Jeff Sanchez, who was not expected to play today, has been bounded for the last couple of weeks with a bruised groin, came up and made the stop on John L. Williams. I tell you what, these Georgia Bulldogs know how to make a goal line stand. They've done it many, many times against the Florida Gators. That'll be second down and goal again from a two-yard line. Gators come out with a pair of tight ends. They have a power eye left. Bell turns, gives to the Atlanta touchdown, Gators! watched himself over the top of the two lines and fell in the end zone. It is 13 to nothing, Gators. The dogs do a great job of jumping up on that line of scrimmage, but you can't stop this kind of talent. Look at the height that Neil Anderson gets on that leap. Jeff Sanchez tried to make the play. Herschel Walker had done that so many times to the Gators in the past. Bobby Raymond attempting the point after. Split the uprights, and the Gators lead. It's 14 to nothing. Florida leads Georgia. We'll be back with more from the Gator Bowl in just a moment on the Gator Television Network. Approximately nine minutes remain in the first half. The Gators putting their second touchdown up with a, a leap by Neil Anderson, who went diving through the air for two yards. Actually, more like four yards, two up and two across. It was an amazing leap. Let's be realistic about this situation, though. It was a cheap turnover and a penalty. But you'll take six points any time you get it. What's that, the three-yard line he's leaving from? Now, you twist your body on purpose so you don't present a big physical presence to the defense so they can knock you back. He twisted his body on purpose to give them not, not too good of a shot at him. There he is. Let's go, Neil. It is 14-0. About nine minutes left in the opening half, and the Gators will be kicking off. A long end over end kick goes into the end zone, bounces once, and goes on out. It'll be brought out to the 20-yard line. Stanley Blaylock took a look at it as it sailed over his head. He was hoping it would clear the baseline on the fly, and the Bulldogs would get it at the 30, but it was about a yard short. Larry, you just mentioned while we were on a break, uh, remember LSU, Florida jumped off to a 14-zip lead against LSU Tigers, wound up tying the ball game. Many, many times Florida's jumped on Georgia early, only to lose the ball game in the end. You never, never count out a Vince Dooley Georgia Bulldog team. Bulldogs take the ball at their own 20-yard line. David Dukes runs the team from quarterback. He's back to throw on first down. He drills it to Smith, lost the ball! 
big pile up. The Gators had it for a moment, but I believe that it's going to be ruled an incompleted forward pass. Oh, wait a minute. I don't know about that. A little confusion on whether it was a reception and fumble or an incomplete pass. Third big gigantic hit by Ricky Eastman, number eight. Uh, good call. Good call by the referee. Instant replay proves him correct. They're always correct. Just ask him. Now, that was a good call. It's second down and 10. Ball at the 20-yard line. He sure waited long enough to make his mind. Yeah, he was a little late in that, although he may have made the call and was not detected immediately. Lane is in motion to the left. The handoff goes to Popelitz Smith, goes straight up the middle of the 25-yard line. It'll bring up third down and five for the Bulldogs. Smith doesn't give them much of a, a shot at a target. He's 5'10", 195. He is a compact fire plug type. Alonzo Mitts making the tackle. When you look at his average per game, uh, excuse me, average per carry, 6.8 yards for Popelitz. Very impressive. Dukes back to throw to the sideline. And Smith drops the ball at the 30-yard line. He had first down yardage, but he let it squirt away. Well, season and individual game tickets for the 1984-85 Gator basketball season are now on sale at the Gator ticket office. You won't want to miss a minute of the action this season. The Gators play an exhibition game on November 14th. They open the season against Central Florida on the 24th. Contact the Gator ticket office for more information. To have that big season, to have that big victory, sometimes you need luck on your side, and that was a lucky break for the Gators that Copeland Smith dropped the pass. No first down for Georgia. Chip Andrews with a high hanging spiral. Fair catch. Call for it. Drop by Tibble. Bulldogs recovered, I believe. Wycliffe Lovelace fell on the bouncing football, and the Bulldogs, who have not been able to move the ball this afternoon with bad field position, get a big break. It only takes an instant to make a mistake when you're receiving that punt. Roger Sibble knows exactly what he wants to do, but just in the last instant, he mishandles the ball. Big turnover for Georgia. Come see, come side. So now the Gator defensive unit will be called upon once again. Smith carries the ball for about five, still shoving forward, and finally stopped inside the 35-yard line by Patrick Miller. You saw a perfect look at the replay from the end zone camera with Sybil going over for the fair catch. He saw a big hole in front of him, and you may have believed that he had taken his eye off the ball, regardless of the fact that he called for the fair catch. He may have been thinking about it a little bit. Oh, man, look at those yard line straps in front of me. But now the Gator defensive unit will be called upon to try it again. Dukes almost fell, back to throw, downfield it goes, incomplete. Closest man to it was Ricky Eastman. Another big play by the cornerback, number eight, Ricky Eastman from Dinellon, Florida, leaping up to deflect the pass. Great field position for the Georgia Bulldogs. They haven't had this kind of field position all afternoon. They need to take advantage of this and get on the board. Well, of course, they have Kevin Butler, their outstanding kicking ace, who has a 60-yarder to his credit this season. So. The Bulldogs, if they don't score six, are within field goal range. Lots of action at the line of scrimmage, and flags are down all over the field. Looks like Patrick Miller was guessing on the snap count a little bit, possibly, and jumped across prematurely. We'll have to wait and see on the call. We're in the mid-stages of the second period. Here's another look, and there you see Mitz going. A little bit prematurely. Alonzo Mitz hadn't seen that much action. Oh, they are calling him for being pulled offside. Illegal procedure is the call against the University of Georgia, and that'll cost the Bulldogs five yards. Well, we didn't see any movement on Georgia's side on the replay, but possibly there was some in the backfield. So the ball has been moved back to just inside the Gator 40-yard line. And it'll be third down and 10. Gators lead it 14 nothing. Best field position of the day for the University of Georgia. Lane is a slot to the right. Dukes back to throw. Now decides to run the ball, reverses. He is hit and hauled down nicely by Patrick Miller. 
at the 35-yard line. Patrick stayed at home. He said, come on, big fella, I'm waiting for you, and he got him. I want to tell you what, you're not going to see a better play made than Patrick Miller just made in the open field all by himself. He was going to contain the quarterback, not let him outside, and he wound up making the tackle himself. A tremendous play by Patrick Miller. However, there was a penalty flagged out, and it looks as though the Gators will be penalized five yards for being offside. So back-to-back -back five yarders against uh, each team moves the ball back to the 34-yard line or down Defensive to the 34-yard line. Team offside at the snap. That'll be third down and five is where we all began about a minute and a half ago. Vince Dooley talking with his aides on the sideline. Bulldogs break the huddle, sending a couple of receivers wide to the right. Lane is set as a slot to the right. Lane is in motion to the left, stops, reverses. Dukes. And Gary gets down to around the 26-yard line. It'll be very close to a first down. May have picked up the necessary yardage for the first down for more, the Bulldogs. A lot of movement up front by the Georgia offensive line. Cleveland Gary picking up the first down. They Keith Williams made the tackle. Spotted it at the 28-yard line. That's a first down for the University of Georgia. The Bulldogs moving the ball following the turnover. Have Lane in motion to the right. Dukes with a handoff to Smith. Just pushes forward to the 23-yard line. Arthur White, a freshman from Frost Crew, came up to make the tackle. But the Bulldogs are starting to get their ground game going a little bit. Oh, it's a perfect afternoon for football in northern Florida. And this huge crowd has been witness to some spectacular events so far. The Bulldogs are averaging 230 yards per game on the ground. The Gators are yielding 120. Big test for the Gator defense on this series. Approximately five minutes remain to be played in the opening half at the Gator Bowl. Lane is in motion, then reverses, comes back to the long side. Smith finds a hole, and he is cut down as it fell very quickly. Fell around the 15-yard line. And it looked as though it was Ron Moten that got a hand on the foot and tripped him up as he crossed the line of scrimmage. That is not the correct time, but that is the score. Remaining in the first half, approximately five minutes left. The Gators trying to stop the Bulldogs, who have moved downfield following the fumble of the Georgia punt. A wing to the right. Dukes pitches back to Smith. Smith trying to get outside, gets inside, and Miller wrestles it down at the 16-yard line. Mark Corp was also there. They will spot the ball at the 16-yard line. Georgia's on a roll, picking up another first down. They like to get the ball to the tailback. Mark Korf comes over from his inside position to make the tackle on Andre Smith. All these backs for Georgia have had an impressive second quarter. Cassius Osborne is wide to the left, laying from his slot in motion, then returns. Pitch coming back to Gary. And Gary gets to the 15, maybe the 14. Mark Korf, a senior from Granada Hills, California, made the tackle. Ball is at the 15-yard line. It'll be second down and uh, about eight, I think it's seven and a half yards to go. Approximately three minutes to go in the first half. Osborne flip to the right, Lane in motion to the left. Whoa, and a back going straight up the middle. I believe it was Andre Smith that had, it looked like a little Canadian football for a moment as everybody was moving every direction. And Smith would have had a big gain, but he didn't have the ball, and it was still safely in the center's hands. A little anticipation there. <laughs> Looks like he thought he had an appointment and had a place to go, but uh, big mistake. Big five-yard penalty. That's all foul. In coach, but offense. And coach, but assessed against the offensive unit, has moved the ball back five yards to the 20-yard line, where it'll be second down and about 13 yards to go. A long 13. Might be closer to 14. And we have an official timeout. Well, we keep mentioning every Saturday how 
mental errors can come back to haunt you. And Georges was in a great position there to move in for the score. The, the Gator defense was thinking, we're willing to give up the field goal at this point, but we're not going to give up a touchdown. And then Georgia turns right around and helps them out by penalizing themselves. 246, I believe we heard from the official remaining in the first half. So there's plenty of time for the University of Georgia. Second down and it's got a 15 and a half. Archie goes wide to the left. He hasn't played much this afternoon. And a slot to the left as Duke comes to the line of scrimmage. Duke rolls to his left. Look, throws to the end zone. Intercepted in the end zone. It was Jarvis Williams that picked it off for the Gators. Second interception of the season, and the Gators will take over on their own 20. You could almost sense the sprint pass was going to come because of the formation and because of Herman Archie out there on the left, Georgia's favorite receiver. Three men in the secondary read the read the play from the beginning. Jarvis Williams making the big interception in the end zone. It is 14 to nothing. The Gators have the ball back. We'll be back in a moment on the Gator Television Network. Two minutes and 20 seconds left to be played in the first half, and turnovers have played a very important role in this game. Georgia turns the ball over on a fumbled punt. Florida gets a touchdown. Florida turns the ball over on a fumbled punt. Georgia comes up empty-handed. Gators dodged a bullet on the pass interception by Jarvis Williams, and they have the ball on their own 20-yard line. Odom is in motion to the right. Kerwin Bell gives to John L. Struggles forward for about five yards out to near the 25-yard line. I'll stay with us during halftime. We have some very interesting features, an interesting interview with the senior associate athletic director, Richard Giannini. And we'll take a look at the statistics of the first half of play here at the Gator Bowl. And it has been a game of thrills so far. John L. Williams, eight carries for 21 yards, somewhat below his average for the season. And Lorenzo Hampton is operating in tailback on second down and about five. Now John L. breaks free, got the first down on his feet all the way to the 34-yard line. Jeff Sanchez came up and made the tackle on John L. Williams, but it's a big game for the Gators. It's a first down at their own 34-yard line. Anytime the guys in the secondary start making the tackle, you know you got problems up front. That's an unusual situation for Georgia, too, because they're so dominating at stopping the rush. Well, the Gators would like to get another if time allows here in this final stages of the first half. Bell pitches back to Hampton. Hampton knifes through and spun down at the 39-yard line. Kirby Stewart made the tackle on Hampton at the 39-yard line in Gator territory. This is Jeff Sanchez, number 31, the strong safety for Georgia, is an all-conference performer. He's had some injury problems, and they're glad to have him out there this afternoon. Jeff Sanchez, number 31. Second down and five as Raymond McDonald comes to the left, and uh, Frankie Neal goes wide to the right. That's the long side of the field. Hold him in motion to the right. Bell turns, gives to John L., and there's nothing there. He gets out to the 40-yard line, and Steve Boswell, the inside linebacker from Warner Robins, Georgia, came up to make the tackle. There's David Dukes on the sideline. It's been kind of a frustrating first half for this young fella including the intercepted pass in the end zone. That's his fourth uh, pass that he's had picked off this season. David Duke's uh, dad played for Vince Dooley when Vince first came to Georgia back in 1964. So you know there's a lot of red and black blood in that family. Third down, about four yards to go. The ball at the 40-yard line. Whistle sounds, and that may be the end of the half. We'll see. It is. As we uh, stated earlier and have been stating, the clocks are not working here at the Gator Bowl, so the first half comes to a close, and the Gators have a 14-0 lead over the University of Georgia after two periods of play. 
I'll stay with us at halftime. We'll be back with some special features to look at the statistics and other information coming up on the Gator Television Network. Florida football highlights featuring the best plays from this week's Fighting Gator football game. Don't miss any of the action with host David Steele, along with comments from coach Galen Hall and player interviews. Florida football highlights. Gator football is a presentation of the University Athletic Association and WCJB Sports. Everybody looking at our size, and you know they they saying we're about the best offensive line that ever been here. So it's you know it's going to be pressure on us. But Gator offensive tackle number 75, Lomas Brown, is used to pressure. The 6'5", 280-pound senior from Miami is one of the nation's best at his position. It's more mental than physical because you. I mean, you could just look at uh, who you're playing in front of, and it's different techniques that, that he line up in. And by those techniques, you'll know whether he's coming inside or outside. And you know that'll help you still, you know, just being out there, just trying to just strong, and he go inside and you step outside. So, you know, mentally, it's, you know, it's demanding mentally. It does get rough at times. You get hurt, but it's, you know, that's, I guess that's why they bulk us up. And I work on my explosion, you know, trying to get another player off the ball. You know, I think that's really important for the offensive linemen to have a good explosion. Lomas is majoring in recreation, which he wants to apply in the corporate world. This doing, dealing with the concept of, um, you know, designing programs for big industries and stuff in the recreation field. The big corporations that get a lot of their uh, workers into, you know, shape and stuff, you know, reducing heart attack and all that. So, you know, it's challenging and it's growing. I don't want to have to ever struggle. You know, I want to be able to just live, you know, live my life out, you know, have fun while I live. You know, I want to be in a job where I'm dreading getting up, you know, 8 o'clock in the morning going to work. You know, I want to be something like where it's a challenge. And, you know, come on to a family, you know, just, you know, be a mild-mannered dude. I'm going to remember, um, you know, the fans. And I'm going to remember um, the faculty, you know, because it's like... This is like one of the you know top-notch you know academic schools and everything. I think you know it's like individualized where you can get help. You know it's not just put you in the classroom and you just sit in a classroom. I mean you know you got teach professors that really care and stuff. And you know I'm gonna just you know that's gonna be something I'm gonna remember. It's a lot of people that you know I think will want to be a Gator, and you know I got the chance to be one. Florida football highlights featuring the best plays from this week's Fighting Gator football game. Don't miss any of the action with host David Steele, along with comments from coach Galen Hall and player interviews. Florida football highlights. to have as our halftime guest, Richard Giannini, who is the Senior Associate Athletic Director at the University of Florida. Richard, very deeply involved in the tape delay football program, and from what I've been able to understand, it's gone very well. Yeah, we're very pleased with it, Larry. Uh, as you know, we cover the state of Florida basically with a tape delay, and we also have some cities outside the state of Florida that are carrying it. And I think we're one of the few universities in the country that tape delay all 11 our football games, and uh, next year, we hope to expand it, take it to New York, take it to Chicago, take it to St. Louis, Pittsburgh, Philadelphia, really try to get great exposure for the University of Florida. Well, it's a tremendous tool to take the University of Florida and its football program to alumni around the country. It also has to be a great tool for Galen Hall and his uh, team to uh, get into the recruiting area. Yes, it really is. You know, we've got great fans uh, throughout the country, all over the state of Florida, and Many times they're not, they don't have the opportunity to come to Gainesville or the games, and this gives them the chance to see it. And also the fans that do come to the games, uh, it's an exciting game when you're sitting in the stadium, you don't get a chance to see a replay. So I think the combination of doing a full game tape delay along with our coaches show is has worked very well for us. 
Sometimes I think uh, and often overlooked are the sponsors that are involved in helping put a program together like this, and you've had some great support. We really have. Uh, it's just tremendous. And uh, even with the adversity that we've had this year, we've been in contact with, you know, we have basically 15, 20 sponsors that are involved in the television, and uh, every one of them say that they'll be with us next year, and they're just proud to be a part of Florida football. And, I mean, that's really heartwarming. These people know the kind of program that we have. They know that we've got a great program that will continue to be great and that they continue to want to be a part of that. And that, that's very pleasing to all of us. Well, it's uh, hard to predict the future, of course, but the Supreme Court decision really threw things into a bit of a turmoil when it comes to college football and television. Yes, it did. Uh, it uh, Coming so late in the year, it wasn't until uh, the end of June that they made their decision. Really, uh, it's made a lot of people change plans, and uh, we had to do some adjustments, and uh, we're not sure next year what will happen. The CFA package with ABC, ESPN was a one-year deal. The SEC package with Ted Turner was a one-year deal. So everybody will be coming in December. They'll be out uh, negotiating new deals, and so we'll have to figure out all over again what we'll be able to do. But uh, I think that it's given us an opportunity to be on TV more. This year we'll be on six times, uh, either Turner, ESPN, or ABC, and, and that's the most that we've ever had. So it's been an exciting year, Richard, and on behalf of Jim Yarbrough and everybody at TV20 and everybody involved, we appreciate your cooperation, everybody at the university, and it's been a lot of fun. Well, we really enjoy uh, y'all, Larry and Jim, and appreciate the work that you've done along with Channel 20. We're a great team, and we're going to keep it going. Great. We hope so. Thank you very much, Richard, and good luck to you. We'll be back with more from the Gator Bowl in Jacksonville after we pause for these messages from our local stations. Back at the Gator Bowl in Jacksonville. The Gators leading the Bulldogs 14 to nothing as we near the conclusion of the halftime performance by the University of Florida marching band. And as we take a look at the statistics, you see that the Gators again have presented a very balanced offensive attack. And Georgia's got problems passing the ball, obviously, in this ball game. They only average 108 yards per game, but you know, they're not too excited about minus two net yards passing. Florida, on the other hand, had one big drive, uh, the pass to Lorenzo Hampton, then get, get the big turnover to get another six points. Uh, Georgia's was able to pick up a turnover, but weren't able to put points on the board. Now the pass interception by Jarvis Williams in the end zone spelled the end of what really was the only threat of the first half by the Florida offensive unit, and that came as a result of the fumbled punt by Roger Sibble. And we're going to be surprised if we don't see much offense in this second half. Uh, Florida comes into this game uh, averaging a lot of yards on the ground, 158 yards via the pass. Uh, we expect to see some more points on the board in the second half, and I'd be surprised if the defenses continue to dominate. Well, the track record, particularly for the Gators, has been that the second half has been extremely strong because, basically, of that big offensive line. Well, we'll be back with more from the Gator Bowl in just a moment. Stay with us on the Gator Television Network. Larry Osterman and Jim Yarbrough from the Gator Bowl in Jacksonville, where the University of Florida leads the University of Georgia 14 to nothing. Well, there are signs all over the place, obviously, and all kinds of banners and all kinds of attire that people are wearing to the old ballpark this afternoon. The one thing that everybody in this great stadium this afternoon realizes that the University of Georgia ain't dead yet. They have had, over the years, a tremendous tendency to come back and make ball games extremely tight and pull them off. One of the reasons Vince Dooley is so well respected is because his teams come from behind, not occasionally, but consistently, to win big ball games. And the Florida fans have seen it happen enough. They know, they know they're not about to relax with a 14 to zip lead. The Gators will be kicking off to start the third quarter. Hopefully the clock will be operating in this second half. It was functioning during the halftime festivities. And it will give everybody a little bit better idea of what's going on. Now here's Perkins with his line drive kick. And it sails into the end zone, goes out of bounds on the near side. 
kind of an unusual kick that uh, Perkins got away that time. It was going end for end, but uh, horizontal with the turf rather than end over end as like, he usually kicks it. It's like a helicopter yeah, ball. Yeah, it did. <laughs> well, David Dukes got his shot in the first half. Now it will be Todd Williams to make the start for the University of Georgia in half number two. He is a junior who has had a bad shoulder. He's missed the last three ball games. He is from Wake Cross, Georgia, six feet, 173. He was the starter before being injured. David Dukes took over, and now it will be Williams in half number two. Herman Archie is split wide to the right on first down. The big tailback, Cleveland Gary, goes straight ahead out to about the 30 three-yard line, Keith Williams made the tackle. Cleveland Gary, one of several freshmen participating for the Bulldogs today. Todd Williams entered today's ball game with 78 passing attempts, 40 completions for 410 yards. Georgia feels more comfortable, I believe, with him throwing the football. A flag on the play, illegal use of the hands is the preliminary indication against Georgia as Mark Corf tunes in. Takes a look at the sideline. I presume that the Gators will take the penalty. And will move the ball from the 30 back to the 20, where it'll be second, first down, and 20. Now, you don't want to put yourself in a hole right off the bat, but here Georgia goes in reverse. First and 20 for the Bulldogs. Archie goes wide to the left. Slot to the left is Hockaday. Smith is the fullback, and Gary's the tailback. Gary gets the call, spins, and gets about five yards out near the 25-yard line. Keith Williams made the tackle on him there. That'll be second down and 15 yards to go for the Bulldogs, who trail 14 nothing. Both these teams are accustomed to averaging Five and six yards per carry at the end of the first half. Both teams are around that three yard per carry mark. Now the leading individual rusher was John L. Williams. He carried the ball 11 times for 36 yards. He has a 5.8 per carry average starting today's game. On second down, Williams rolls to his right. Looks, he's throwing long. It is intended for Lane and it's broken up beautifully by Ricky Eastman. Ricky, oh, excuse me, Larry. Ricky Eastman keeps coming up with one big play after another. He read that play from the beginning, saw the receiver turn up field on him, was step for step, was able to knock the pass away. Uh, Todd Williams is taking a look at a third and 15 situation, all just short of the 25-yard line in Bulldog territory. He sends Archie to the left, and Hockaday is a slot to the left. Williams rolls to the left, looks to throw, dumps it off to Smith at the 30, and he is hauled down at the 34-yard line by Tim Newton, and the Bulldogs will be forced to turn over the football as the Gators take advantage of the penalty, play some sound defensive football, and Tim Newton made the catch of the receiver at the 35, it'll be fourth and five. Well, we keep saying how important that first series is at the beginning of each half, and here the Gator defense comes out and rises to the occasion. That's Chip Andrews. He averages 46 yards per punt for the season, 44 in the first half on three kicks. He gets a high wobbly kick off. Bad boot goes out of bounds at the 42-yard line. And Andrews, who has been so sensational, shanks one. And the Gators have great field position, leading 14-0. We'll be back in just a moment on the Gator Television Network. 13-22 left in the third quarter. Alonzo Johnson. He said this one's for you. I hope he's right. I hope so. 14-0 the score. Gators have the football at the 42-yard line following the bad punt by Chip Andrews who doesn't miss many. It comes down to special teams so many times and the Gators have been virtually flawless in that department today. Well the winning attitude starts with individual performance combined with a strong team morale. 
Penn State Federal Savings and Loan admires this spirit and is proud to be the exclusive sponsor of the most valuable player of the game award, which will be announced at the conclusion of today's game. Penn State Federal, Florida's full service financial center. First and ten for the Gators. Pitch back to Neil Anderson. Struggles and gets all the way out to the 47-yard line. He was hit by Carlisle Hewitt and uh, knocked him off balance, kept staggering forward, and picked up some big yardage. Anderson, the third leading career rusher. He has had a big season this year with uh, three games in a row over 100 yards in rushing. But in the first half, he was limited to just 17 on four carries. Second out at five for Florida. Odom is in motion to the right. Bell, quick throwback to the near side. Oh, the ball was dropped. Incompleted forward pass. It was intended for Natil, and he didn't hang on. That'll bring up third down and five. He'd have been long gone, too. Big Lomas Brown is out there making the block. A little misdirection. Quick release to the wide receiver. Ricky wants to run before he finds the handle. No one's out there but Lomas Brown and the cornerback, and Lomas knocks the cornerback away. Ricky had the speed down run the linebackers. Incompletion. Well, it's third and five. Bell back to throw. He's looking down the middle. Anderson at the 45, and he has spun down at the 47-yard line. He had first down yardage initially, but as he tried to retreat a bit to gain a little bit of outside leverage, actually lost a couple of yards following the reception at the 47. We'll see whether it's enough for a first down. It appears to be short. Whoop, it is going to be a first down. Here's another look. Good protection up front. Anderson for a minute tries to break loose, but he still picks up the first down. We thought perhaps he was down short of the first down marker, but he did make it. He did make it, not by much, but enough, and that's what counts. Pitch coming back to Anderson. Oh, he handled the ball right down around his knees and had a little sticking on his knees that time. He got to the 44-yard line in Bulldog territory, but uh, it was a little dangerous there for just a moment. Great field position for the Gators. It'll be second down and seven yards to go. Bulldog defensive unit huddling. Breaks as the Gators come to the line of screen. Roll. There's a split to the left. A slot to the left is Totem. And the team is flanked to the right. John L. Williams struggles down to about the 43-yard line. Donald Chumley, a senior from Savannah, Georgia, made the tackle. I tell you, these guys up front for Georgia, Donald Chumley, number 76, and Henry Harris, the middle guard, number 52, are doing some slugging and fighting up front. Those guys are not being blocked very easily. The Gators converted uh, two of six third down situations in the first half. They have converted one here in the second and are faced with another. This time it's third and five. Back to throw to the side. It's cut by Cole. He's out of bounds at the 36-yard line. It's a first down for the Gator. Andre Holmes was there, but Gary Roll made a great catch on the far sideline, and the Gators keep it going. We talked earlier this season about the intelligence of Gary Roll. He knows exactly where he has to go to pick up the first down. He eyeballed the hash mark or the yard back yard marker he knew where he had to go before he made his break to the sideline big first down great play Gary Rowe all at the Bulldog 36 yard line all the hash mark on the far side Raymond McDonald is flanked to that side pitch coming back to Neil Anderson he lost his footing as he tried to cut back as he approached the line of scrimmage and was decked right there Kenny Simmons making the tackle may have picked up a half yard nose of the football just short of the 35 yard line I tell you number 52 Henry Harris the nose guard for the Georgia Bulldogs is creating havoc on that line of scrimmage take a minute and watch that nose guard number 52 Henry Harris he's penetrating the line of scrimmage on every play and he's just a sophomore he is from Decatur Georgia Gary Roll is flanked to the left. Raymond McDonald to the right. Odom is in motion to the left. Fitch coming back to John L. Williams. He's going to throw. He lobs one downfield. Incomplete. It was intended for a roll, but out of bounds at the 11-yard line. John Little was right there with him. 
Well, John Elf threw a shot put into the air, one of those prayer jobs, and it came out of bounds and fell harmlessly. That's one of the kind you usually see on Sorority Row, I think. Uh, John L's going to have some uh, explaining to do to his teammates when that's rerun in the films next week. Brett Wickman has come into the ball game to replace Walter Odom. And Wickman will set as a slot to the right. Uh, third down and nine. This is the third third down situation in this drive for the Gators. They converted the first two. Bell back to throw to the side. Great catch at the 26-yard line. It was Wickman that made the catch, and I believe he may be at first down yardage. Very close, perhaps a couple of inches short. Jeff Sanchez was there, but what a catch by Wickman. That's right, Wickman doesn't see a lot of action with the Gators. He's the fifth receiver, but he comes up with a big catch. Number 20, Brett Wickman. What happened on that play? We had a blitz. The Gator backs picked up the blitz, allowed Kerwin Bell an opportunity to throw the ball. It looks like perhaps it might be a first down. No, well, it's just inches short. And I'm talking inches here. So it'll be fourth down and inches for the first down at the 26-yard line, and the Gators are going to go for it. Now they're stacking everybody up, are the Bulldogs. Split wide to the left. The handoff to John L. Bulls got the first down inside the 25 to the 24 yard line. Carlisle Hewitt hit him but couldn't hold him, and John L. Williams squirmed to the 24 yard line. You don't see the fullback or the first back through carrying the ball that often on a short yardage situation. Generally, the ball is delivered to the tailback, the fullback making the block. There, John L. Williams was given the ball. Caught George a little bit by surprise, I believe. That is an excellent point and an excellent call. First and 10 for the Gators at the Bulldog 24. John L. Williams sticks his head down, drives to the 21, then shoved back by three Georgia players, led by Knox Culpepper and Calvin Roth with Steve Boswell, the inside linebacker on the left side, also there. Robert Kerr comes back in to operate at left tackle position offensively for the Gators. Big Scott Trimble's coming out. Larry Scott had been injured the last few weeks with uh, some knee surgery. It's nice to see him back in action. That's a pretty hit. Second down. Six yards to go for the Gators. Just short of the Bulldog 20-yard line. Bell fakes the handoff, back to throw. He's hit and dropped for loss back at the 26-yard line. He got blindsided by Knox Culpepper, who came roaring up from behind and dropped him back to the 26-yard line. I tell you what, Knox Culpepper is playing an incredible ball game. He's in the Gator backfield very rapidly. Kerwin doesn't even see him. He's lucky he held on to the ball. Yeah, indeed, he was. One thing we haven't seen this afternoon that has been typical of the Gator offense is the draw and the screen. We have yet to see any of that. Well, it's third and 11. You never know what might happen here. They have the ball almost in the middle of the football field. At the 20, just short of the 25. Blitz. Bell throws to the side. Nice catch over at the 18-yard line by Gary Roll. It was Jeff Sanchez there with him, but he's short of a first down by about four yards. Georgia wanted to put the pressure on so Kerwin wouldn't have a time, have the time to pick a receiver out beyond the first down marker. They were willing to give up that play. Good defense by Georgia. Big field goal coming up by the Gators. Bobby Raymond, who during his career has hit 33 of 39. He has the best percentage in Southeastern Conference history. Will attempt a 35-yarder. Ball is down. The kick is up. It's long enough. It is good. And the Gators tack on three more with 7.27 left in the third quarter. It's Florida 17. The Bulldogs nothing. We'll be back with a kickoff of the moment and the Gator Television Network. Great defensive efforts on the part of the Gators, an opportunistic offensive play, 17-0 Gators lead. And speaking of defense, Jim, certainly Ricky Eastman has to be among those in the running for the Mid-State Federal Player of the Game on his performance. The high end over end kick, Lane lets it go. It is picked up by Blaylock. He's out to the 20, springs free, and cut down on a nice 
nice diving tackle at the 22-yard line. Brett it was Whitman. Brett Quickman that came up and grabbed him at the knees. Quickman's excited. He got to catch that pass earlier. He doesn't see the ball thrown to him that often. He's pumped up. Five minutes and 55 seconds expired during the 14-play, 40-yard Gator drive with Bobby Raymond booting through a 34-yard fielder goal to make it 17-0. Now the Bulldogs have the ball on their own 22-yard line. Hockaday is flanked to the right. Williams gives to his tailback. Gary, and he goes no place. May have picked up a yard as Mark Corp and Alonzo Johnson, a couple of big, fast, hard-tackling guys, dropped him at the 24-yard line. A gain of about a yard. Let's go in second and maybe eight and a half yards to go as Fitz Dewey stops on the sideline. 6.55 left in the third quarter. Williams rolls to the right, cocks the arm, releases, and is caught at the 30-yard line. I believe it was Smith that caught it, and he was driven out of bounds at the 30. It was Williams that made the catch. As he disappeared from sight in front of the gear bench, Leon Pennington made the tackle. So now it is a third down and the three situation for the Bulldogs. They converted two of five in the opening half. We just saw that sprint play, that sprint pass is George's favorite weapon. Williams rolling to the left, looks, throwing long, and it is incomplete. It was thrown wide on the far sideline. Intended for Hockaday, Jarvis Williams was there, and the Gators do it again as the Bulldogs are forced to punt. And a big ovation given the Gator defensive unit as it comes from the field. Jimmy Hockaday tried to threaten Jarvis Williams to make him believe he was going deep. Then he cut to the sideline, but the pass was incomplete. It was just a little bit overthrown. Good coverage also by Jarvis Williams. Chip Andrews will punt for the Bulldogs. He stands at his 15. Ricky Natil is on the Gator, 27. Florida leads it 17 nothing. The staff, the punt, the high, wobbly kick, fair catch called for by Natil. He has it at the 26-yard line, and that's where the Gators will start the play. It's 17-0 Florida, 6.32 left in the third quarter. We'll be back on the Gator Television Network. time scores on scoreboards do not reflect what you witness on the field but in this case I think this is a pretty good description of what we've watched absolutely you see those goose eggs for the visitors hard to believe that the Gator defense kept a powerful Auburn squad without a touchdown and here into the third quarter the Georgia Bulldogs have yet to score on this Florida defense give some credit to those defensive coaches for the Florida Gators First down for the Gators on their own 27-yard line. Roll, who was flanked to the left, is in motion to the right. Irwin Bell pitches back to Lorenzo Hampton. A little one-on-one. -on -one. Picks up about uh, four yards near the 29-yard line. Knox Culpepper and Jeff Sanchez, the two talented seniors for the Georgia defensive unit, made the tackle from the linebacking and safety spots, respectively. Well, the big Gator looks tough out there this afternoon, doesn't he? Well, his counterparts wearing the orange and white have looked just about as tough defensively. Five yards and five carries for Hampton. He has just 19 yards. Roll in motion to the long side of the field. Bell with a handoff to John L. And he gets to the 31, and that's it. As Culpepper made the tackle. This Knox Culpepper is going to set a Georgia record for individual tackles, I believe, this afternoon. I don't believe I've seen a linebacker dominate a game from sideline to sideline. He's making play after play. A year ago, he led the team with uh, individual and assists with 166 tackles, and that's getting around the football field. And he's a senior, and this is his last shot at Florida, and you know he wants this ball game. Third down at six yards to go. Gators have failed to convert the third down only once, and now it'll be twice. As the big rush was on, Donald Chumley got to Kerwin Bell, and that's the first time that they have actually sacked Bell this afternoon. So the Bulldog defensive unit rises to the occasion. Right in, Donald Chumley takes the inside on Crawford. Kerr escapes untouched. Throws Kerwin Bell for a big loss. Carroll stands at his 35-yard line. Good snap, and here's a high, beautiful, long, floating kick. 
Harrell takes at the 30. Comes up to the 40, springs to the 44-yard line, and that's where Georgia will start it. A flag has been thrown, and uh, we may get a penalty coming up here in just a moment. Two flags are down on the field. Uh, Gators may be hit with a late hit here. We shall see in a moment. Clipping. Whoa! Clipping against the Georgia Bulldogs. That's going to hurt the Bulldogs. Instead of being on their own 45-yard line, they're going to be back on the around their own 30-yard line. Ray Criswell keeps booming that football. Ray's from the Jacksonville area. You know, he's excited about performing well here this afternoon. That's the story. And it'll be at the 30 when we return to play here at the Gator Bowl. First down at the 30-yard line for the Georgia Bulldogs, who had pretty good field position, but the clipping penalty cost them. And uh, there is the man, Vince Dooley, who was coach of the year in 1980. He has won 168 football games during his career at the University of Georgia. He is by far the dean of the SEC coaches, and what a job he has done. Georgia last week against Memphis State had problems generating some offense, had problems getting on the board. I think they wound up with 118 yards total offense. Correct. They're having all kind of problems this afternoon with this Gator defense. The Georgia defense is playing well. 4.37 left in the third quarter. Williams turns, gives to Smith. He's got a hole. He's out to the 45-44 yard line before he was tackled by Ron Moten. Now Vince Dooley's hoping to get a spark by sending Todd Williams in to play quarterback. Here he gives the ball to Andre Smith. This is probably his biggest gain of the afternoon. Breaks through the line of scrimmage into the secondary. Roger Sybil comes up to make the tackle. There's Tim Newton pursuing down the field. It's a first down for the Bulldogs. Man in motion to the right. The pitch coming back to Smith. Cuts to his left. He's at the 50 and at the 49-yard line in Gator territory where Adrian White hit him. This is the best series of back-to-back -back running plays that the Bulldogs have had this afternoon. As we mentioned earlier, when the guys in the secondary start making the problems, you know you get start maybe making the tackles, you know you're getting whipped up front. There's Adrian White, the strong safety, making the tackle. A gain of eight that time. It's second down at two. Smith again, big hole, and he is across the 40, down to the 37-yard line. Keith Williams and Adrian White made the tackle, and the Bulldogs are fired up at the Gator Bowl. Another first down for Georgia. The Bulldog fans on the near side are standing. Another look. What's happening is they're, they're getting some movement up front. It allows that tailback to bend the ball back, find that running room, run for daylight. Williams sends Lane in motion. McCluskey is in at fullback now as Lane, Williams rolls to throw, throws downfield, and is caught beautifully at the 19-yard line by Cassius Osborne, his first catch of the afternoon, and it's a first down for the Bulldogs. Roger Sybil made the tackle on Osborne. Williams does a great job of laying the ball in there, a little bit wobbly, but right on the money for Cassius Osborne, a 17-yard completion. This may be the deepest penetration of the afternoon for the Bulldogs. Williams turns, gives to his tailback. McCluskey is inside the 10-yard line. What a turnabout. Keith Williams and Mark Fork made the tackle, but the Bulldogs have completely changed personalities offensively and they are blasting the Gators on the ground. They're pumped up and excited and they're dominating the line of scrimmage right now in this series. It is first and goal at the nine yard line. Williams dropped the ball but he falls on it at the 10 yard line. Tim Newton was right there to jump on top. Flag is down on the field. And there may be a penalty coming up. We'll see. Illegal procedure against the Gator. Well, that's tough. And we also have a player down. I believe it's Pennington who is down at the goal line. So half the distance 
penalty against Florida. Football foul, illegal procedure against the defense. It'll be first down. Dead ball foul, illegal procedure. There's Tim Newton jumping across the line of scrimmage before the fumble. The exchange was weak between the quarterback and the center because Tim Newton had jumped across the line of scrimmage. Leon Pennington being aided in the end zone by the Florida staff. See, he was hit from the back side, it looks like. And he's being helped off the field. Leon Pennington, a junior from Fort Lauderdale. Now you got to give the Georgia Bulldogs credit. This has been a tremendous drive for them. They're down 17 to zip. They needed to create some excitement on their side of the field, and they've certainly done it with this offensive drive. Well, it's been about a 70-yard drive if they complete it. It has lasted for 65 now, and they have first and goal just inside the five-yard line. It's been the first spark shown offensively for the Bulldogs this afternoon. And again, the right side of the Gator line darts offside. This time it was Alonzo Johnson. So the Bulldogs have picked up some valuable yardage without the snap here in the uh, late stages of the third quarter. It's 2.13 on the clock. And uh, another half the distance penalty will be assessed against Florida for illegal procedure. Now, look, the coach will never accept your excuse when you start guessing. And that's what Alonzo's doing. He's guessing on the snap count. He needs to wait for that ball to be snapped. Anytime you guess, you're going to get yourself in serious trouble. First and goal for the Bulldogs. Gators need a big goal line stand. Smith is stopped short at the one-yard line. Hopewood Smith he went roaring up the middle. Stopped by Mark Corp. Arthur White. Clock running, 2.06 left in the third quarter, and the Bulldogs, with their deepest penetration, have it second down and go at the one. The linebackers have to make the play on goal line short yardage. The linebackers have to meet those backs in the air. This time it's the tailback down Humble. the street. Oh, lost the ball. That was Cleveland Gary. And let's see, it is, I believe, going to be the Georgia Bulldogs football. It is. Cleveland Gary tried to go over the top, but didn't make it with the pick skin. But the Bulldogs dodged the bullet, and he'll still have the ball. But I don't understand where they marked the ball. He loses possession of it right here. Well, we weren't able to see. The ball was underneath all that humanity. Third down at a yard to go. Again. Oh! Big hit in the backfield. Fumble. Fumble. Landgrim lost the ball. And the Gators with a big hit. Did they get the football? They certainly stopped the Georgia Bulldogs with a big blast by Alonzo Johnson who blasted Tony Mangra. My goodness, what a hit. Alonzo beats the block of the tight end inside. I believe the ball did pop loose, but number 22, Mangra fell on the ball. So now it is a fourth down and goal as the Gators have moved the back away to the two-yard line. What a goal line stand this has been. You never get beat on the inside when you're an offensive lineman and the tight end got beat by Alonzo inside. The pitch to Smith going to the right, he stopped! Short, and the Gators will take over! What a great goal line stand by the Florida Gators! Tells it all, doesn't it? What a drive by the Bulldogs, only to come up one yard short. Well, you can't say enough about the courage of this defense on this goal line stand. There's Ricky Eastman making the play. Roger Sybil comes up to make the tackle. Ricky Eastman forced him inside. The rest of the defense pursues over to make the play. Watch Roger Sybil. 
He's going to make the tackle and get some help from his linebackers, Ron Moten and Mark Court. Kerwin Bell on the quarterback sneak, trying to get just a little bit of yardage so it can get a little more comfortable. Again, one important thing we have to do is compliment Ricky Eastman because he came up there and forced the play inside, knowing that his teammate, Roger Sybil, was there to make the tackle. Great play by Ricky Eastman. That is the final play of the third quarter at the Gator Bowl in Jacksonville. The score is Florida 17, Georgia nothing. We'll be back with more from the Gator Bowl in a moment on the Gator Television Network. Well, late this quarter, Jim and I will be picking the Mid-State Federal Player of the Game. At the end of the season, a scholarship will be awarded to the university in honor of the Mid-State Federal Player of the Year. Well, it's quite a sight, uh, this huge crowd, 82,349 on hand at the Gator Bowl, and they have seen just about everything you can hope to see in one football game. Unbelievable how Georgia dominated the line of scrimmage on that entire series. What was it, 65 yards? Approximately 65 yards. 65 yards, they get down near the goal line, and the Gators rise up with a tremendous goal line stand. From the one yard line for Florida. Kerwin Bell has Gary Roll wide to the right. Hand off to John L. Williams. He dives forward, gets out to about the three yard line, a gain of a couple for the Florida fullback. Andy Loy makes the tackle. But now it'll be third down. Ball has been spotted just inside the four yard line. Ricky Natiel has gone into the ball game. And it'll be third and a short eight yards to go for the first down. Natiel going wide to the left. Gary Roll is flanked to the right. Erwin Bell, the freshman quarterback, under the center. Drops back to throw. Looks, he's throwing long. Natiel is there. Natiel's got it. He's going all the way for a touchdown for the Gators. Oh, yes. Holy Toledo. Ninety-six yards officially. Twenty-three to nothing. Wowie. My goodness, my goodness. What a tremendous play. Ricky the Rocket Natil. Bell laid it right there, too, and Natil was long gone. will attempt. That's the 13th touchdown pass of the season for Bell. The spot, the kick, and it is good. The Gators lead it 24 to nothing. 14-12 left in the ball game. What a turnabout. Kerwin, excuse me, Larry, in the replay. Kerwin Bell delivers the ball right on the money. Ricky Natil with a tremendous speed. He knows he can coast in from this point. He's just going to look back and enjoy it. And he's a sophomore. What a play by Ricky the Rocket Natil. Now he's going to get a tack for all his teammates. There's our man. 14-12 left to be played in this ball game. It's 24 nothing. We'll be back with the kickoff in a moment on the Gator Television Network. There's Ricky, the man that just caught the touchdown pass. Scampering in to give the Gators a 24-0 lead over this man's Georgia Bulldogs. What a great goal line stand after the Bulldogs took over the momentum offensively, marching 65 yards plus. The Gators stopped him at the one and in turn went 99 yards in three plays. Fair catch called for by Jim Huckaday on the kickoff. And the Bulldogs will have it at their own 25. Smart play by Hockaday, signaling for the fair catch. The 13th touchdown pass by Kerwin Bell establishes a new record for the University of Florida. Wayne Peace held the previous record for most touchdown passes by a freshman. And there's the drive. Three games to go, Larry. What a season. First down for the 
Georgia Bulldogs. Archie is in motion to the right. Williams hands to Smith. He gets a couple out to the 27-yard line. Tim Newton made the tackle. We were uh, approximating that drive by the Bulldogs that stopped short of the goal line at the one-yard line. It was a 69-yard drive for Georgia before the Gators put the clamps on them. Well, we just started to say how important it was for the offense to come up with a big play and match what their defensive teammates have done. And they turned right around and threw the ball to Ricky Natil, who sprinted in for the six. Second down, and uh, Williams throws to Lane. He's out to the 30, 35, and down he went at the 37-yard line. Here's pass complete to Lane. Ricky Eastman made the tackle. He's been all over the field this afternoon. There's a, a pretty good combination. Kerwin Bell getting a little quick breather, and it's Lindsey Smith there with him. Florida has had a great fourth quarter this season. That is what uh, Gators have accomplished in the final period. They have a 24-0 lead here as the handoff goes to Tate, tries to get outside, and Lars Tate is hauled out at the 43-yard line by Ricky Eastman. He is having a career afternoon. Adrian White was there also. Ricky Eastman. The only guy that really had a whole lot of experience outside of Roger Sibold in the defensive secondary for Florida, playing one of his best games of his career. It's uh, second down at about four yards to go for the Georgia Bulldogs at the Georgia 43. Williams looks, throws, it's caught at the 48-yard line, and Hockaday goes out of bounds, and a flag is thrown at the 48-yard line. Arthur White and Roger Sybil were there to make the tackle. We'll have to see what the flag is all about. Well, Georgia's starting to generate a little bit more offense with their passing game. Uh, at halftime, they had minus two net yards passing. They're coming out, throwing the ball a little bit better. Obviously, they have to throw the ball now. They're so disappointed that their last drive came up empty. They need to get something on the board immediately if they have a chance of winning this game. The clipping call against the University of Georgia, and that'll cost him big yardage, marked from the 47-yard line. You'll see it here. Andre Smith does a nice job of catching the ball, but the clip was Hockaday that nailed him. Jimmy Hockaday, number eight. Offense, 15 yards. Then you run, 15-yard penalty. Third down. Second down. So it's second down. You're right. About 15 yards to go for the first down. Let's uh, correct that. The scoreboard shows 15, but it's more like... 14 yards to go for the first down. Ball is at the 33-yard line. One thing we need to remember, Georgia entered this game averaging 27 points a game on offense. Williams back to throw. Lux, he's going long. He puts it high in the air. Lane is there. Lane can't get to it. Adrian White was about five yards beyond. Is Leon Pennington who banged up uh, the toe earlier. And he is suggesting the possibility of an SEC championship and maybe number one in the nation. Well, regardless of what happens on paper in terms of the conference championship, these young guys will know in their hearts that they went out on the field and won it. Perhaps, of course, they have to win this game and, and the Kentucky ball game. But regardless of what happens on paper, these young men are excited in their hearts about their accomplishments. It's third down and 14 yards to go. Williams back to throw, has time now being lost. He to lose a tackler, gets out to the 35, the 40, 45, dives out of bounds at the 46-yard line, and that'll be short of the first down, I believe. Our vision is screened somewhat by the Florida bench or the players on the sidelines. We'll get a different angle here. Todd Williams was the starter for the Bulldogs earlier this season. He had won the job. You can see he's got a lot of athletic ability. Again, his dad was a former Georgia Bulldog ball player also. Uh, he, too, has a lot of Bulldog blood in him. That's right, Bulldog blood. It is a first down for the University of Georgia, so the scramble by Todd Williams keeps the Georgia drive alive. 
12-13 left to be played in this ball game. Talking about the fact that the Gators have shut out the Gators through three, uh, shut out the Bulldogs through three periods. To take into consideration that they kept Auburn out of the end zone last week through four quarters, and three more quarters of shut out football here in this one. Quite a display. The pitch going to Lars Tate, and he gets out to near the midfield stripe. Alonzo Johnson made the tackle. There's Tim Newton. I love all y'all. All right, Tim. Tim's a senior. You know he's happy. He deserves everything that comes his way. He's given uh, the Gators great effort all throughout his career. Brett Lane comes wide to the left for the University of Georgia. Cassius Osborne is flipped to the right as Williams drops back to throw. He's being rushed. He eludes a tackler, and he's down to the 45 and driven out of bounds at the 42-yard line by Ricky Eastman. Run out of bounds by Eastman. Alonzo Johnson put some pressure on Todd Williams, forced him out of the pocket, but Williams has been very successful in the last two scrambles. First down, Georgia. It's another first down for the University of Georgia at the 42-yard line in Gator territory. Well, we keep mentioning Ricky Eastman, and he's played very well this afternoon and deserves strong consideration for that Mid-State Federal player of the game that we'll be picking in a few minutes. Lane is flanked to the left. Williams rolling to the left. Now being rushed, he's hit and dropped for a loss back at the 50-yard line by Keith Williams, a sophomore from Milton, Florida. Big sack for Williams. And it's a big loss for the Bulldogs. Big Keith Williams from Little Milton, Florida. I wonder if Milton's bigger than Mayo. I bet it's a toss -up. They're both bigger than my hometown of Malcolm, Nebraska, I guarantee you. Malcolm? Malcolm, Nebraska. Population 9-8. Second down, 17 yards to go. Williams, straight back to throw. He's looking long, throws, and it's behind Cassius. He had a look at it, but it was a little bit behind him. Roger Sybil put some pressure on, but Cassius Osborne could not make the catch. Roger Sybil cannot believe he doesn't intercept this pass. He's reading it all the way. Oh, my goodness, he's just a shade slow getting there. Ball goes off his fingertips. Now it's third down and 17. Ball at the 48-yard line. The Bulldogs must travel to the 31 and a half to get the first down yardage. Lane goes wide to the right. Archie is split to the left. Williams again back to throw. He's throwing to their sideline and 10 for Archie. He caught it out of bounds. So that'll be fourth down for the Bulldogs. Ricky Eastman, almost. Jarvis Williams apparently broke it up. Excuse Our vision me. was screened here by this camera in front of us, which belongs to us. Absolutely. Jarvis Williams making the play. Number 26. What a strong effort by the Florida Corners. The last two weeks, Jarvis Williams and Ricky Eastman making some great plays. So Chip Andrews will be forced to putt on fourth down and 17. Ricky Nepteel stands at the Gator 10-yard line. Andrews averaging 46 yards per putt, but has not had a good day this afternoon. Gets a good snap, and here's a high, short kick off to the right side, and it reverse bounce goes out of bounds around the 30-yard line. Boy, it's been a tough day for Chip Andrews. So, the exchange of possession. The clock has stopped, 10 26 left, 24 0 Florida. We'll be back on the Gator Television Network. That score has prompted many of the Bulldog faithful to head for the exits, and in response, the University of Florida fans are waving goodbye. You think they're going to miss them? Not much. <laughs> I've been two, two crowds that have really conducted themselves extremely well here this afternoon. They've had a great time. So far, it's been a disappointing afternoon for the Georgia fans, but uh, the Gator fans, I think, probably feel that they had a little bit of this coming. Game's not over. 10-26 left to be played. Roll is in motion to the right. Lorenzo Hampton goes to the short side, breaks a tackle, still gets five, possibly six yards. 
Evan Harris made the tackle. Billy Henson was out in front of Hampton to supply some blocks. Hampton was taking short, choppy baby steps, but each one advanced him further, and finally he burst for about six, second and four. That's the play that worked so well last week against Auburn, uh, resulting in three touchdowns for the Gators. That's a play that uh, Larry Zonka made famous with the Miami Dolphins, a misdirection. The teal, the teal wide to the right, roll in motion to the right. Hampton's got a hole across the 40 and all the way out to the 45-yard line. Jeff Sanchez made the tackle. Another first down for Florida. I tell you what, if Jeff Sanchez has not held on to uh, Lorenzo's leg, it'd be another six points for the Gators. Big hole up front, one defender on the tackle. First down for Florida, just shy of the 45-yard line. Clock running, 9.25 left in the game. Gators lead 24-0. Neal is in motion to the right. Again, it's Hampton. He's got five, he's got six, and now at the 47-yard line in Bulldog territory. It was Bill Mitchell to make the tackle along with Ron Coker. And again, it's another big game for Lorenzo. It seems like in the fourth quarter, that big offensive line starts to dominate all of the opponents. Last week, Auburn was very much in the ball game until the fourth quarter, and the Gators kept pounding and pounding, and it took its toll in the fourth quarter. Again this afternoon, the big guys up front are doing some pounding. And second down and three for Florida. John L. Williams pulls his way to the 45-yard line, and he may have picked up the first down yardage. Billy Mitchell made the tackle on John L. We'll see whether they stack it and unstack. Now, Galen Hall would love to see domination by his offense right here, a long series that eats up time on the clock, keeps the Georgia offense on the sideline. Robert Kerr has come out of the ball game. Scott Trimble, a senior from Longwood, Florida, is to replace him. They're bringing the chain in for measurement. Those are the ball touching the 45-yard line. And it is a first down for Florida. Eight twenty-five left. A little breather taken by this man, Keith Williams, along with Alonzo Metz, who gets a handshake from Mark Cork. What a day those guys have had. First and ten for the Gators, just short of the Bulldog 45. Neal in motion to the right. And off to Lorenzo. He's got five, six, seven, eight, all the way down to the 36-yard line. Steve Boswell, a sophomore, made the tackle. He got some help from John Little, but it was power football. Power football, Lomas Brown, Billy Henson, Phil Bromley, Jeff Zimmerman, and John L. Williams, the fullback, has to block for the tailback to be able to pick up yardage, and John L. does a nice job. Scott Tribble, the other big tackle in there right now. Uh, Walter Odom, the tight end. Time has been called for just a moment. Now the official is winding the clock. It will be second down and two with 7.33 left of the ball game. Neal comes wide to the right. McDonald, Mike the short side. Shadow starting to get long here at the Gator Bowl in Jacksonville. John L. Williams just struggles for it. Still on his feet. Cuts to his right. He is at the 30, 25, 20. Drilled out of bounds at the 16-yard line by Kevin Harris. John L. was all but down at the line of scrimmage, kept his balance, put his hand down, cut to his right. Big first down yardage. Gators are knocking on the door. John L. Williams has had a number of his runs in his career, just like this one, where he continues with that leg drive. Great balance, bounces out to the outside, and has the speed to pick up a lot of additional yardage. It's at the 17-yard line. John L. picks up the first down. Now Corlew has come into the game, operating a fullback as Roll goes in motion alongside. Neil Anderson gets to the 15 and inside to near the 14-yard line for the Gators. John Little and Knox Culpepper made the tackle. Well, I think back last year, Jim, on the, almost the same type of a play where the whistle sounded before John L. got into the end zone and the touchdown did not count and the Gators ended up losing it 10 to 9. Absolutely. Matter of fact, that play is exactly one of the ones I was thinking about when you, when you consider John L. Williams' career, his ability to stay on his feet. Uh, last year, they whistled.
wrestled the ball dead. Here they did. Second down and eight yards to go for Florida, and time is being called on the field by the Gators with 6.32 left to be played in the ball game. Florida leads Georgia by a score of 24 to nothing. We'll be back with the conclusion of this afternoon's game in just a moment on the Gator Television Network. State Federal Savings and Loan is performance-minded and is proud to recognize outstanding individual performance with Mid-State's Most Valuable Player of the Game Award. Physical fitness, keen mental concentration, and a true spirit to win is what Gator football is all about today and in the future. Well, you see the total domination that Florida's had in the aerial game this afternoon. They're down knocking on the door now as a result of a fine run by John L. And Bell is back to throw, uncorks it, and it's a little behind the intended receiver at the 10-yard line. That was Odom. Lindsey Smith is in the ball game now, as it is a third down and eight. Irwin Bell looking to the near sideline. As Smith leaves the playing field. Clock is stopped with 6.32 remaining. 24 to nothing is the score. Bell gets the play. 19 seconds left on the uh, clock to get this play underway. Natiel is put to the right. John L. is back in at fullback. Hampton is the tailback. Eight seconds left on the clock, and uh, Bell is back to throw. Being chased on leashes. It is incomplete. Nice play at the 12-yard line. The pass was intended for John L., but it was Williams, or Little, I believe, that got a hold of him and wrapped him up and uh, would not allow him to make the catch. One of the great things Kerwin Bell does is escape the sack. He doesn't hurt his ball club by getting an eight or 10 yard loss. He throws the ball away. The guy is getting better and better with every ball game. Tremendous poise. Bobby Raymond will attempt a three pointer. This will be a 32 yard attempt. Griswell will spot the ball at the 22. The snap, the spot, the kick is up. It looks good, and it is good. The Gators expand their lead to 27 to nothing. With six minutes, 21 seconds left in the game, we'll be back from the Gator Bowl in Jacksonville in just a moment on the Gator Television Network. Six minutes and 21 seconds left to be played, and they're dancing in the aisles here at the Gator Bowl. The Gators lead the Bulldogs 27 to nothing. As you see our shots coming in from this helicopter, which has been giving some fine shots from the air throughout the afternoon. Here's the kickoff. Fair catch called for by Jimmy Hockaday, and he grabs it at the 22-yard line. So now the Gators will see if they can stop the Bulldogs and perhaps post their second shutout of the season. They blanked. Syracuse 16 to nothing. They kept Auburn out of the end zone the last time out and have flanked the Bulldogs through all but the final 618 of this game. Anytime you get a shutout in major college football, your defensive staff gets so excited, and well, they should because it's so, so difficult to do. Georgia was averaging 27 points a game. They have none right now. Now Williams will try to do something about it as he retreats to throw, throws it back to the near side. And he is upended at the 24-yard line. Jarvis Williams made the tackle. While we're talking about defense, let's mention Joe Kynes, defensive coordinator, Dwight Adams, linebacker coach, Dan Coughlin, defensive line, Ty Smith, linebacker, Zayvon Uralian with that secondary. Great job by all those men. It'll be second down and eight following a two-yard pass completion. Williams steps up, rolls to the right, cocks the arm, releases. Caught by Archie, is hit immediately at the 36-yard line by Ricky Eastman. I don't know that uh, I can recall anyone out of the secondary being as effective this afternoon as Ricky Eastman has been. He has been every place. He's been visible, that's for sure. What a great game. I'll bring the chain in to measure, see whether the pass completion was good for the first down. It was. Vince Dooley, proud man who had an unbeaten SEC record coming into today's game. A five-game winning streak after the loss to South Carolina, 
knocked off Alabama, Mississippi, Vandy, Kentucky, and Memphis State. Ran into a buzzsaw here this afternoon. 5-21 left for the ball game. Williams. Lux throws to the sideline, caught by Hockaday, and he's shoved out of bounds at the 40-yard line by Jarvis Williams. So the clock stops with 5-10 left in the half, left in the game. You look at Georgia's record, and again, I believe they've only lost four games in the regular season in the last four years. Last year, they beat Texas in the uh, Cotton Bowl. In the last six years, they've lost just two games and tied one in the SEC. They're 37-2-1. That's an incredible performance. I bet you. Second down and three. Williams pitches back, and he is hit behind the line of scrimmage and dropped there. Keith Williams made the tackle on Tony Mangrum. Arthur White was also there. Mangrum, who had carried the ball a considerable number of times coming into today's game, has seen limited activity today. He was averaging about four yards per carry, but has been little used this afternoon. 442 left in the ball game. Williams has Archie to the left. Williams rolling to the right. Lux throws to the sideline, incomplete, intended for Williams. On the far sideline, Ricky Eastman was there. His pass was poorly thrown and falls incomplete. That was Scott Williams, the man for whom the pass was intended. Forcing the punt. Another big tribute to that Gator defense. Fourth down and four, and Chip Andrews will come in to do the punting for the University of Georgia. And Ricky Natiel is back at his night to make it the 20-yard line. Awaiting the snap. Good snap, and here's the kick. A high, long, beautiful floating kick. Bounces at the two and goes into the end zone. That was by far the best punt of the afternoon for Chip Andrews. But it'll be brought out to the 20, and the Gators will have the ball with 4.21 left in the game. Galen Hall, the man who wears the title of interim in front of his head coaching position, may be hard pressed to keep that in that capacity if he continues to do what he has done. Yeah, he can remove that interim pretty quick, I think. You know, Galen Hall with, uh, he says, what's the big deal about beating Auburn and Georgia? You know, I just take my guys out there, we line up on the field, and we go out and do it. He, he doesn't realize the years of frustration that Gator fans have gone through beating those two ball clubs. Well, I guess he had to go through it to really realize it. I'm sure he understands it. But, uh, here's Neil Anderson, cuts to the outside, and he gets to the 24-yard line. Hit there by Tony Flack, a junior from Greensboro, North Carolina. Well, you reflect back on everything that has happened to this football team throughout the year, off the field, as well as on with Dale Dormany going down. Official timeout has been called. Every player down. Neil Anderson may have been banged up on the play. But when you think about the uh, fact that Dale Dormany went down on the Tuesday prior to the opening game against Miami at Tampa, and to see Kerwin Bell step in, and to see this team gel and come together, I'll tell you, it has been some kind of great overall performance. Yeah, a tremendous tribute to the staff for maintaining and keeping this team together. Well, there is Ricky Eastman, who has been selected as the Mid-State Federal Player of the Game. Very fine job, young man. Neil Anderson, I think, was just shaken for a moment. He is okay. He is not in the ball game at the moment. John L. takes over at fullback, and Lorenzo Hampton is in a tailback slot on second down and six. Neil is in motion to the left. Pitch back to Hampton. Cuts back to his right. And runs into a pair of white shirts at the 26-yard line. Knox Culpepper, who has played so well throughout the day for the University of Georgia, and Carlisle Hewitt made the tackle. But I just don't think you can give these Florida players too much credit for what they have accomplished this year. Oh, absolutely. The big guys up front have just dominated uh, every Saturday afternoon. There's three great running backs. you got a freshman quarterback with tremendous poise. you got some receivers who can catch the ball when they're called upon. And you got a defense that plays as a team unit. 
Third down at five. Neal is in motion to the long side. Bell pitches back to Hampton. He is hung up, and down he goes at the 21-yard line. It was John Little that raced through and made the catch. The stop. Real nice play by Little. He penetrated the line of scrimmage, made the play in the backfield. Two minutes and 40 seconds left in the ball game on fourth down. Ray Criswell will be putting the ball for the Gators with Jimmy Harrell standing back on his own 37-yard line. Good snap. Here's the punt. It's a high, beautiful floating kick. Harrell takes it to 38, gets out to the 40, and spun down at the 43-yard line. Again, sensational punt coverage. Anthony Williams, a freshman from Tampa, downfield to make the initial contact. And there's the coaching staff, Galen Hall, receiving congratulations from some of his assistants. They all deserve the credit. Oh, the yeah. assistant coaches, they worked so hard during the week with uh, preparing for the game, uh, getting the players ready. Mentally and physically, it's uh, there's not enough hours in the day for these coaches to work, and I have tremendous admiration for them. That plus so many things that have gone on that everybody has rallied around this football team. Uh, these Gator fans are sending some kisses your way from Jacksonville. It's going to be a happy group leaving here tonight wearing the orange and blue. Season and individual game tickets for the 1984-85 Gator basketball season are now on sale at the Gator Ticket Office. You won't miss a, a minute of action this season. Norm Sloan is going to have a very, very fine basketball team. The Gators will play an exhibition game on the 14th of November that open the season against Central Florida on November 24th. You can contact the Gator Ticket Office for full information. How many of the red and black supporters are leaving the arena but the orange and blue are going to stay till the very final gun and absorb all they can absorb it's been a big week for some underdogs i don't think you could call that guy an underdog no not that, not that one <laughs> he wasn't a bulldog i know that 216 left to be played Williams to the sideline, Lane out of bounds. That'll bring up a second down. Ricky Eastman was there. Lane caught the ball out of bounds, and it'll be second and ten. Clock stopped with 2:09 left. Now you got to remember that not only the victory is important, but again to the defensive staff, a shutout is such a tremendous achievement. They're doing everything they can to shut these dogs down here in the final two minutes and blank them on the scoreboard. Second and ten for the Bulldogs. The ball at their own 43-yard line. Todd Williams being chased to lose a tackler throwing long. It is way overthrown. Look for a moment as though uh, one of the Gators downfield might have an opportunity to pick it off, but it was over Ricky Mulberry's head also, intended for Stanley Blaylock. Nice job by Sam Garland, number 71 on the pass rush. Big Sam's about six foot seven. He finally gets untangled and starts his pursuit of Williams just missing him. Williams throws the ball down the field incomplete. Now it's third and ten, two minute and uh, second left. Williams again looking, throwing, oh. looking at the 40-yard line, picked off by Mark Corp. He's across the 50 and to the 45-yard line in Georgia territory. Mark Corp, who missed five games. Look at the president of the University of Florida applauding. Mark Corp, who missed five games, came back last week in a big week against Auburn and now intercepts Todd Williams. Yeah, it's nice to see Mark Corp back in the lineup. He's such an inspirational player. And you need inspiration every series on defense. And Mark Corp comes up with a big interception. His first of the season, Rodney Brewer is in a quarterback now for the Gators with a minute and 50 seconds left in the ball game. Corlo is in a fullback. Reggie gets the call. And he gets five quick yards for Florida. John Little made the tackle. On James Massey. I tell you what, there's years of frustration being vented here this afternoon by the Orange and Blue. They cannot believe 
the scoreboard, I'm sure, which reads 27 to zip. Wickman comes wide to the right. Clock running, a minute and 20 left in the ball game. At the 38-yard line, the play is whistled dead. The clock continues to run, a minute and nine left as Henry Williams made the tackle. Bill Carr on the sideline, you know he's excited, the athletic director. All his staff deserves the congratulations along with, of course, the man of the hour, Galen Hall. 46 seconds left in this ball game. The Gators just that many ticks away from shutting out the eighth ranked Georgia Bulldogs. James Massey goes straight, uh, correction, that was Reggie Corlew that went straight ahead to the 35-yard line. Bill Mitchell making the stop. Now the time is being called. It is close to a first down. And they'll bring the chain in from the far side. 26 seconds remain. I think the Itapa Keg fraternity is throwing a party in the end zone right now. Look at the smiles on these coaches. Boy, do they deserve that. Yeah, uh, tell me. Dan Brooks hey. works with the Coast oh. Guards. Right. Galen Hall, Jimmy Ray Stevens, the young assistant coach. Use the clock. Galen Hall right suggested we run the quarterback sneak. There's Tim Newton. Out. <laughs> Frankie Neal. And on the other side, a contrast. Vince Dooley, head coach of the Bulldogs. That will be the final play of the game as the Gators post their second shutout of the season, beating the Georgia Bulldogs 27 to nothing. The clock has been stopped with seven seconds remaining. Here we go. They start it again. There he goes, Galen Hall, the man of the hour, to the shoulders. He, he was trying to tell us guys, he said, hey guys, don't boot me up, not this time. They said, hey coach, we're taking you out there on our shoulders. He need a big offensive lineman to carry him too, I'll tell you that. Well, it's difficult to find words to describe what has transpired here this afternoon. The Gators completely dominating the University of Georgia. As the two coaches exchange congratulations, the goalposts come down. A happy band of Gator football fans who have finally snapped the streak, the long, frustrating streak against the University of Georgia here at the Gator Bowl. I tell you what, frustration is putting it mildly also. Tremendous victory for Galen Hall and his staff. Georgia's dominated this series the last few years, and it's tr a tremendous victory for Galen Hall. Came here as an assistant and a tremendous record as an offensive coordinator at Oklahoma. Now he's enjoying the thrill of victory as a head coach. The University of Florida supporters are parading the goalposts along the sidelines as Galen Hall is hooked up for the electronic medium and uh, undoubtedly will be answering these questions that are poised to him right now for the next hour or so. Many will be the same questions. There may be some questions pop up. Tell me if you can hear about Neil. But it all boils down to the point that this man and his staff put together a game plan and his players executed that game plan and completely dominated the University of Georgia. Whether it was all physical ability, whether it was the expertise of the coaching staff, probably a combination of both. But uh, a big, big win for the Gators today. Well, what goes around comes around, and today was Florida's day. Many times in Jacksonville it hasn't been that way, but Coach Hall had his team ready. Uh, they performed well in all aspects of the game. Uh, a tremendous victory for the Gators. 27 to nothing over the Georgia Bulldogs. 
That's the final. The Gators win it 27 nothing. We'll be back with more from the Gator Bowl in just a moment on the Gator Television Network. The big scoreboard in the end zone flashes. How about them Gators? That sort of says it all. Once again, a big uh, victory for the Gators, eliminating uh, a lot of years of frustration with that uh, Auburn-Georgia series, uh, beating Auburn convincingly last week, and then dominating the Georgia Bulldogs this afternoon. Well, there's one game remaining in the search for the SEC title, and that is next week at Lexington against the Kentucky Wildcats, and we'll be there with all the action on the Gator Television Network. We hope you will be able to join us. That's about it from the Gator Bowl in Jacksonville. Larry Osterman speaking for Jim Yarbrough. Thank you for being with us. The final once again, Florida 27, Georgia nothing. See you next week from Lexington. University of Florida Fighting Gator Football has been brought to you by... Coors Beer, Zenith, the members of Dairy Farmers Incorporated, Atlantic Bank, your Florida and South Georgia Ford dealers, Likes Meats, Scotty's, Farm Credit Service, Gatorade Thirst Quencher, Blue Cross Blue Shield of Florida, Eastern Airlines, and by Florida Citrus Commission. <laughs>